University of Texas if Dawson can make the extra point. As they'll put it down at the 10, off the block punt, the ball picked up on the goal line and taken in for the TD. And Dawson for the kick. It is good. So at 10 08 to play in the first quarter, Texas breaks out of the block. They 14 to nothing. From right up the center, there's going to be two men. The uh, back can only block one of them. Two mistakes. Oklahoma, one offensively, one on special teams. Leads the two touchdowns for Texas. Michael Baldwin got the touchdown for Texas. Put the chicken on the grill and you smoke it all up. Put the cheese on the chicken and you wrap it all up. With the guaca, you put the guacamole with the pico. Sprinkle on pico de gallo. Put it all in a tortilla. And now you got a chili's fajita. La, 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 la. Nobody makes chicken fajitas like chili's. Nobody. So did you call for phone service? Is technology amazing? At GTE, we think it should make your life easier. Like Express Dial Tone, which allowed Kim Swanson to order new phone service by plugging in her phone. Cool number, thanks. Which she finds pretty amazing. What are we going to do for dinner? We can have some wieners. Why? Because she won't have to eat something really scary for dinner tonight. Amazing. If you buy a Cavalier today, we wouldn't be surprised if by the time it's scheduled for a tune-up, you've already got it paid off. If by the time it needs new rear shocks, you have your master's degree. If by the time it needs a transmission fluid change, your baby is in first grade. Or if by the time it needs a new muffler, we've elected two presidents. Any car can be easy to buy. Cavalier is easy to own. That's what makes it a genuine Chevrolet. The silver and black are on the attack, but John Elway and the Broncos are ready to stampede. Oakland battles Denver on ABC's Monday Night Football. Let's go back to the punt. Two players right over the center. They're going to go on either side of the center. The center is not responsible for blocking anybody. Two men on the up back. He can only take one. Lewis gets the, the punt block. Just good coaching by the staff of the Longhorns. Here's a look at the first touchdown following a turnover, a fumble by the quarterback. Fitzgerald, the tight end in motion. James Brown reads it. And two turnovers, two quick touchdowns for the Longhorns. So Pat Fitzgerald get, uh, gets the uh, first TD and Bodwin gets the second one. And Texas off to a big start, 14 to nothing over Oklahoma. Bill Dawson's about to pop it again with P.J. Mills standing back in the end zone waiting for it. You don't get a lot of balls to return against Dawson. <laughs> this one also, this one may come out. It will from the yard deep. Mills almost runs over one of his blockers, gets away from that first wave of tacklers and gets it out. A nice return to about the 27-yard line, and you got a face mask call coming up. And add on at least uh, five more and possibly 15. But it looked like it might be inadvertent. There's your face mask, and uh, we'll see what they mark off. It's a five-yard mark off. The Chile starting lineup along the offensive front features J.R. Conrad. The first time Howard Schnellenberger met Mr. Conrad, he said, Howdy, son, you're too fat. <laughs> yeah. Next time I see you, I want to see something that doesn't jiggle. Yeah. And so J.R. went to work, and he's dumped 15 pounds. And as a senior uh, out of Edmond, out of Fairland, Oklahoma, it is, he's become a very good player and getting better every week. Big man. But there's not much room along that defensive front the way the Texas Longhorns are swarming to the ball. So Oklahoma's going to have to fetch around here and find something a little bit different to break the tenacity of the Texas defense. Tony Bracken uh, had a great big play a while ago. He had a big sack on Eric Moore before some of you joined us for a six-yard loss. So he's back and able to play after having been laid up for nearly a month because of a cracked bone in his leg. 
Eric Moore, the left-hander, shoots it good, complete to Stephen Alexander. And the ball goes carrying out of bounds, but it's a completed pass up to about the 47-yard line. Both coaches like to throw the ball to their tight end. So, for well, once, we're going to see the tight ends involved a lot in the offense today. Tyson King is the middle of the linebacking core for the Longhorns, and he's a good one. He had a fumble recovery a while ago, early in the moment, when the emotions are just literally boiling over. And he's the leading tackler coming into the ball game. He holds him together. Well, just across the 47, where it is a first down for the Sooners. 14 to nothing, Texas leads here in the first quarter. Horns almost jump offside. Here's Moore coming around to the left side. This is run all the way. And gets it across midfield. And for the first time today, the Sooners are on the Texas side at the 49, where Taji Allen knocked him out of hand. The secondary for Texas, Bob, is a good one. Westbrook is the, the outstanding player, but the free safety, Chris Carter, also, he's the second leading tackler, and uh, he's something special. Westbrook and Carter, two outstanding players. Mr. Carter will put a hat on. There's Mr. Carter. He'll mess up your serve, right? I guarantee you. The ball is handed <laughs> inside to Gerald Moore. Moore's a good size running back at 226 pounds. the stories today for Oklahoma offensively they need to have a big day running the football they're averaging 250 yards a game and they're going to need that and defensively they want to get physical with this uh, passing attack Oklahoma has a number two rushing defense they need to stop Texas long arms passing right now the Sooners just need to hunker down and play some football too because Texas jumping out to a 14 nothing lead Oklahoma needs to try to manufacture something here. Get a point on the board. Moore couldn't hold it coming out of the backfield. Awkward catch he was trying to make. The ball was thrown behind him, and, and uh, he gets up pretty slowly. He had not dinged up. Had a mix-up in the backfield, Keith. This was a new... Howard was saying the other day that we don't have all of our offensive system in yet. The quarterback faked the play, and then actually one of the offensive uh, blockers backed up into him and stepped on his foot. Not very good uh, communication in, uh, in the backfield. Now here's Brian Lewis. His first punt was blocked, resulting in a touchdown. And he's had three blocked in the last three games, one in each. So he's, uh, he needs to get a little better protection, otherwise he's going to have to go to a rest home. Here's the return by Mike Adams. It's a wide receiver, and they chase Adams out at about the 12-yard line. That's a 41-yard punt and a 5-yard return. There's a penalty flag resting back up at the 45-yard line. Very close to the line of scrimmage. It's a big eight crew of officials this year. Next year, it'll be, uh, would have been a Southwest Conference crew. They alternate, but next year, these two teams move into the Big 12. So the whole alignment arrangement in this part of the country is going to change as of next year. And we'll talk some more about that as the day goes on, but it looks to be particularly beneficial, I think, for the Texas school. Here's your call. On the receiving team, 10 yard penalty, previous spot, first down. So that gets a groan from the big orange side of the stadium. <laughs> you talk about the side of the stadium, Keith. Normally, when you're doing a ball game or you're playing, if you get a cheer or a boo or something, you know immediately who, you know, who, who which side of the, the, the team it favored, what, the good home team or the visiting team. Here you've got half of uh, one side of the stadium for one team and half the side for the other. You get a cheer, you don't know who's uh, favorite. Sooners get a break there as Texas is caught holding. On the first down play. Moore back, gets his pass away and it is incomplete intended for Stephen Alexander and covering on the play was the uh, free safety Chris Carter, number 16. Saturday night on ABC, brand new episodes of the Jeff Foxworthy Show, and maybe this time starring Marie Osmond and Betty White. World premiere movie Picture Perfect follows, starring Home Improvement's Richard Karn, Grace Under Fire's David Thomas, and Mary Page Keller. All new Saturday night here on ABC. Second down and ten. 
Number 20 is Michael Rose in the backfield now for Oklahoma. Ball is pitched to Moore. Gerald Moore. A tackle with some authority by the Texas Longhorns. Trey Thomas, the strong safety, number 17. Trey is a 210-pound junior from Sugar Land. It'll be third down and 11. That play losing a yard. The ball is just barely inside the 38-yard line of Texas. Longhorns leading 14 to nothing here with seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Eric Moore back. Has good protection. Lost control of the ball and threw it in the ground. Uh, Brackens may have gotten a piece of it. He did, Keith. Good call. He knocked it down. And uh, good defense. Uh, the turnover it wasn't actually a turnover. It was a penalty. Gave uh, the ball back to Oklahoma. Texas defense shuts him down again. So Brian Lewis now comes in for a third try at a punt. Safety is the man deep for Texas now. No pressure. Trying to knuckle it down there and trying to knock it out of bounds, and he can't quite do it. It rolls into the corner of the end zone. Will come out with a 20. Texas will have it first down. And it's 14-0 long run. There was a time when we didn't have a worry in the world. Today, well, we seem to be making up for it. That's why you need Chevy Lumina, a car you can trust, a car so well-engineered and affordable, you could have it paid off long before it needs its first tune-up. Chevy Lumina, because someday you'll realize nobody's got enough money and everybody's got enough worries. Twenty-five years together, they've just flown by. Twenty-five years of kids, jobs, moving. I didn't just want to bring her back to her favorite place. I wanted to give her something she's only dreamt of. The 25th anniversary diamond necklace. One fall we took out our son's favorite sweater and it didn't fit anymore. I think life insurance is like that. You don't realize how much your life has changed until you take out your policies and sit down with your agent. That's why we have the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup. I can help you see if your coverages are up to date or if you've outgrown them. Then you make the decision. A policy has to fit, just like a sweater. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. CFA College Football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Smooth Bush Beer. And easy drinking Bush Light. And De Beer. The diamond is forever. Get a third possession, leading 14 to nothing at 6.59 to go in the first quarter of play. Been a long quarter, and a big one so far for Texas. Williams is the man up close in the slot. Back goes James Brown to throw it. Wings it out to the sidelines, and it is caught by Ricky Williams. Williams has slipped out of the backfield and picks up a first down to the 31-yard line. Roderick Simpson made the tackle, and here's the way the Sooners line up on defense. It is a 4-3 defense. When Howard Schnellenberger came in, he dropped the old 52, which Bud Wilkinson had put in place back in the 40s. He felt that the 4-3 would be a little better against all the passing that's being done today, and Roderick Simpson, who just made that last tackle, is the man who anchors that line back in court. And leads the defense in tackles. So it is first down for Texas up on the 31. And Brown likes what's going on, so he'll throw a screen. And he had somebody in his face. Number 47 was coming right down the highway at him. Brent DeQuasi. 
And he dumped it off, and the play blew up in his hand. The secondary for Oklahoma he is led by number five, Malin Wesley. He's another hitter. Not all that big at 5'9", 178 pounds, but he'll climb your wagon. Interesting story, Keith. Uh, he started three years ago when Gary Gibbs was here, and then he, they sat him down for a couple of years, was a reserve, and when Stellenberger came in, they said they didn't look at any of the films from the past years. They brought him in to start. Sean Mitchell is on his way. There are no flags in his wake, and it's a free ride down the sidelines to a touchdown. Blazing speed by Sean Mitchell, 69 yards. The toss is just going to be this way, and it's going to cut back. A lot of the Oklahoma defenders will overrun it. Neal, number 69, gets a nice block. Now he cuts back against the grain. Big, big score there. Kick is in the middle of the uprights, and Texas has exploded in the first quarter to lead 21 to nothing. six bucks. Harry. Yeah? How come you're charging me for the hot dogs? The 52-inch Magnavox big screen TV with smart screen and a picture so good you can charge for the hot dogs. <laughs> smart. Very smart. Now get a pair of wireless speakers free when you purchase a Magnavox big screen TV. Sunday, we believe in putting on our best. Maybe that's why no car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR than Chevrolet. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be out in the open where it's all plain to see that the land is pure, untamed and free. There's no place that I'd rather be. the Oklahoma-Texas game. Sooners were ranked number one in the nation. Texas number two. Texas quarterback Duke Carlisle throws the block that springs Tommy Ford to make the score 14-0, and Texas goes on to beat the Sooners 28-7 in 1963. This in a series that goes back to 1900, this being the 90th play. Bill Dawson will kick it off now for Texas. The Horns leading 21-0. Daryl Royal told me that his favorite memory of this series, of course, he was the Horns coach for 20 years, and a great one, was 1958, when Texas scored first against Bud Wilkinson Sooners, went for two, made it, won the game 15-14. Ah. Texas has won five of the last six. And they're in pretty good shape to win this one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the dance ain't over. Deep in the end zone again, Dawson will not allow a return. So they'll come out to the 20 for the first time. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central on ABC's College Football. These are the games you've got for yourselves. If you look about the area, you don't find the one you like, call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. And then at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, we'll have game one, the World Series, next Saturday here on ABC Sports. From the 20, here come the Sooners, shocked, trying to get something going. They'll go back to the air as more throws underneath. 
all caught by Jeff Frazier, who's coming off injury. No place to go as Brian Westbrook decks him right when he catches the ball. Gain is about five. stories now for Texas. Uh, they need to air it out, uh, put the ball up a little bit, and uh, defensively stuff the run and force the redshirt freshman Moore to put it up. And uh, 21 points ahead. They've certainly done it. Yes, they have. <laughs> well, here's what's making it go right now for the Horns. They're just not giving any room in the middle. And if you can shut down the middle against the Oklahoma running game, well, uh, He's going to do all right. That's right. That's exactly what we said. Uh, stop the run. They have not been good at stopping the run as Texas defensively. Uh, they've given up uh, on an average 192 yards a game. Five straight games, they've allowed an opposing rusher to go over the 100-yard mark rushing. So. Third and four. Eric Moore's pass down the middle. Caught, drilled in there this time, and it's quick for the first down to the 35-yard line. It's P.J. Mills making the catch, and he made it right in front of Dusty Renfro. Renfro is a freshman out of El Dorado. But P.J. Mills last week in the Iowa State game had a play that he turned into a 90-yard play for a touchdown. So he's dangerous. First down on the 35. With four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. 21 to nothing, Texas. <laughs> Eric Moore staying in the air. Lucky to get it back. I mean, he threw the ball literally to Trey Thomas, the strong safety of the Longhorns. And Thomas was so surprised to see it coming unimpeded like that, he dropped it. Uh, he forced that throw. Uh... The young man we mentioned, he is a red shirt freshman playing in only his sixth ball game. He doesn't know all of the offense uh, yet. Uh, he's going to be a fine player, but it's uh, asking a lot to, to have a young man step in and learn a system and uh, carry the load. They, they need to stay with their running game. Out of the shotgun, second down and 10. Quarterback draw. And he will get up and walk away. I personally would not like to see my quarterback running too much in this particular matchup. Well, Schnellenberger has said that, you know, this is, he wants to bring in his pro-style offense, but he's, this is his first year, and he has to work with the players that were there in the program. Most of these players were recruited for a wishbone option attack and the not for a drop-back passing offense. Third and six. Come some action. You got that right. That's Tony Brackens coming up the middle. And Oklahoma will punt. Brackens is just going to beat the uh, Stamps. The left tackle, he goes to the inside. That's his 10th sack of the year. This is his sixth game, so he's doing pretty well this year. So Brian Lewis standing inside his 15-yard line to kick it. Mike Adams is waiting for it. Texas ought to have pretty good field position because that ball is hooked badly. Very poor kick by Lewis. Penalty flags all over the place now as the boys get into a bit of a scuffle. And that ball went out of bounds at about the 47-48 yard line of Texas. There is a wind blowing from our left to right. And Texas has had the win at their back the first quarter. That's a 25-yard punt. I think you got some unsportsmanlike conduct or personal foul. Somebody whack somebody. Yep. Against Sooners. Frustration there. Yep. Making a lot of mistakes here in this first quarter. Making enough for the whole day. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet foul. most valuable first player of the foul. game. Oklahoma, 15-yard penalty, first down. Today, Chevrolet contributing almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So instead of having the ball on the other side of the field, 
They've got it now at the 38-yard line of Oklahoma. First down. You've got three minutes and eight seconds to play. The wind is at their back. And James Brown sets them up. Wayne McGarity and Ricky Williams at the backfield now. And he's going to throw it on first down. He's got all kinds of room to run. And he takes a hook slide at about the 32-yard line. And midst all that noise on the field, here's Lynn Swan. Keith, you recognize this young man. It's Joe Washington. He played a lot of football for Oklahoma. What makes this game so important, Joe? Well, really, I think of the fact that it's played on neutral grounds. You've got two states going after each other, Texas and Oklahoma. In fact, a lot of uh, players that are playing for Oklahoma are from Texas. And it's a rivalry that based, uh, dates back 90 years ago. So it's bragging rights, if you ask me, Lynn. We're about to run the play, but how do you feel first time in 20 years you've watched this game? It is really exciting. It's nerve-wracking, and I'm glad I'm on the sideline instead of on the field. <laughs> what's, what's the most difficult thing you think you ever face when you play this game? What makes it so hard? Well, really, you know, there, there's a, a lot more riding on it than just actually winning a football game. This is something that, you know, the people of Oklahoma put a lot of emphasis on. They feel really deeply about this football game. And it isn't just the fact of, uh, of playing a football game and winning between the lines. It's bragging rights for the estate. Well, keep some good thoughts in there for Oklahoma. Uh, Keith? Man. Fun to see, Joe. He has a great running back. Third down and short three, and Brown's a little pop pass that is completed for a first down to Wayne McGarity. Out of the backfield, McGarity is a freshman from San Antonio and moved the chains for the Longhorn. And one of the things that uh, John Makovic said he likes about this year's team is he's got some speed in the backfield. You saw uh, Sean Mitchell with that long touchdown run. Ricky Williams, the true freshman, are the two starters. But McGarity comes in and can catch the ball. And he says, I've got a lot of speed, a lot more speed than we've ever had in my four years here at Texas. Something about the maturity of James Brown, too, Bob. This uh, That last pass was the fifth different receiver here in the first quarter for the Texas passing game. Brown better hurry. Now dumps it. Throws it ahead to Ricky Williams and puts old Ricky between a rock and a hard place. But instead of taking the sack, he was able to pick up about five yards. Roderick Simpson, number 51, was that fire-breathing dragon chasing him across the field. <laughs> he said, that kid, he said, that quarterback's too fast for me. I can't catch up with him. <laughs> he was on a blitz. He had a free run at him and... Uh, Brown just avoided a loss, got outside the pocket, and uh, picked up uh, some yardage on it. It'll be second down and four. The play was good for six. And the ball is at the 20 of Oklahoma. Just inside it. And it's Ricky Williams, the single back. He's got it. No place to go, and I'm not even sure. He didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He lost the yard on that play. Martin Chase, number 93 was the man who made the tackle. There's the Big 8 conference action today at Kansas. Surprising, surprising. Look at that. Kansas State. Yeah, they're, they should be both those Kansas schools figure to win today. That's That whole state's got to be rocking. Something. KSU had scored 147 points coming into the ball game. Unanswered points. Uh, here's Brown again, that quick little pop to the outside. And a good defensive play over there by Darius Johnson, or Mike Adams would be counting six. I mean, he had him by the coattail. If we still had the old cotton tearaway shirts, uh, he'd get in the intro. <laughs> Remember, Bobby Dodd at Georgia Tech had the cotton tearaway. He didn't have cotton, he had gold. <laughs> by, by the end of the game, those jerseys didn't look too good. They were naked, yeah. <laughs> That's a quiet day for Bebo, having a little lunch. They brought him an arm load of hay earlier. He grunted twice. They brought him a truck load. Here's the play going into the middle. Sean Mitchell carrying. And Mitchell pounds it down to about the six. So it's been one of the longest quarters of the season so far for Oklahoma as the Texas Longhorns have jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead. Let's take a look at the numbers for the first quarter. Look at total yardage, big in favor of Texas. The turnovers, Oklahoma had one that led to a touchdown, that's the points off, but they also had a punt blocked that 
was recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. So punt blocks don't count as turnovers, but in Howard Schnellenberger's book, it does. So they've had two turnovers that led to 14 points. Pitches outside to Mitchell. Cuts it back into the traffic. Penalty flag as the ball gets down to about the five-yard line. Starting the second quarter of play. Second down for Texas at the Oklahoma Six. Five teams scored nine points against Oklahoma in the first quarter, the first five games. Texas scored 21. Holding against the Horns. So Texas makes a mistake. Yeah, the strength of uh, Schnellenberger's ball club was defensively. He returned uh, like 10 starters on defense. It's Tanner who is banged up on that play. He's a defensive tackle. But the strength of this ball club, Oklahoma, defensively. Baron, Tan uh, Baron Tanner out of uh, Athens, Texas. Junior is going to have to leave the ball game. Defensive tackle. That'll get Kelly Gregg in. And the penalty moves the football back out to the 21 yard line where it is second down and 20 for the Longhorns. That's uh, Kelly Gregg right there. He's a true freshman Keith. Uh, last year in high school he was rated the number one heavyweight wrestler in the nation. Ooh. So he's in there fighting amongst the, uh, the interior linemen and wrestling with him. So it's a good spot for him. Incomplete intended for Mike Adams. Coverage by Darius Johnson. There you go. Isolated on uh, Johnson, number 42. Well designed. Gene Dahlquist upstairs, the offensive coordinator. Running Adams all the way across the field. There's nobody over there to help Johnson. He makes a nice play. Good throw, too, by Brown. And it's third and 20. You like to see those types of things, Keith. Good, well designed, well thought out, well executed, both offense and defense. Round down. Number 93 got some penetration. Martin Chase, he was one of those involved, but Cedric Jones, number 57, is always around to get a piece of the action. So they deck Jones all the way back at the 33-yard line. Well, Ricky Williams, Fitzgerald, Mitchell, Brown are all still out on the field. So it is fourth down and 32 for a first down. They can get a first down about a half a yard short of the goal line. That's the... Uh even though Dawson is, a, is an excellent field goal kicker for the Longhorns, this is too long a field goal into some wins. So Makovic says, hey, you know, it's too, too short to punt, so let's go for it. Well, it looks like they're just going to let the clock run, take the five-yard penalty, and then bring the punter on. And then, and then maybe kick it. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just burning clock right now. So that gets your punting team on the field. Not all bad. Well, the thinking here is move the ball back a little bit, and actually it helps the punter yep. try to get the ball inside the 10-yard line from a little further back. It's Mark Schultes from Sherman, Texas. Averaging just under 40 on this season. Gets it up and they win. And they've got it down at the two. Quentin Wallace tracks it down and catches the ball just like they do it in the book. And it goes in the books as a 36 yard punt with no return and the Sooners get it at the two. McGee checks in at quarterback for Oklahoma. He is the senior. And Howard Schnellenberger with some of the mumbling going on about uh, the redshirt freshman moving ahead of McGee. And Howard said, uh, Eric Moore is going to be my quarterback. And McGee's going to be the backup. I had a fellow named Kozar at Miami as my starter. And a fellow named Tescoverde backed him up, and it worked. 
And we're going to do that here as McGee comes up throwing out of the end zone and completes the pass to Stephen Alexander, the tight end. And he's got it up for a first down at about the 15-yard line. So they've got some room to work. And here's John Sunder. Keith, as you know, USC steadily climbing the polls throughout the season and still unbeaten. Larry Parker fielding this punt, cuts one way back, the other way stays on his feet. 57 yards, he returns it, but he loses the handle at the end of the return. Fortunately for him, teammate Mike Bastianelli falls on it for the touchdown. USC leads 10-0. Keith. Oops. It's my alma mater they're beating up. This is Gerald Moore. Now that's the kind of running attack we kind of expected early on from Oklahoma, but the Sooners haven't had an opportunity to stretch it out like that until now, with Trey Thomas and Chris Carter finally bringing him down. That's another first down. Moore is the leading rusher on this team. He's a stout young one, only 5'8 and 226 pounds. Stellenberger has always, Keith, played two quarterbacks, especially get him in the second quarter. McGee gets in. Change the tempo a little bit and let the starter see it from the sidelines. In with the ground game. James Allen now has this carry. And he's got a good seven yards on the play. Michael Rose, number 20, leading that sweep around that side with one very good block. Here's 20. Barron turned to 92 at the sprained ankle, Keith, but he just tested it. They rewrapped it. He told his coach he's ready. He's going to be back in the ballgame. Thank you. Hand off is to Allen. Slams in, gets one yard. So they'll be looking at third and short. Clock ticking along with 12 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. And the Texas Longhorns, 21 to nothing. Tanner with a sprained ankle. Laying on grass has got to roll again. Oklahoma on third down conversion so far today. One out of five. They've got third and one here. Rose and Allen in the backfield. Not more. More. Girl Moore, number seven to deep man. He's got the ball. I think he's got the first down, but that's what those fellows wearing those strap shirts get paid for. Yes. Well, I wouldn't know. I will say, if they, even if they didn't make it, I would not have been surprised if Snellenberger going for it as Bracken comes off. We, heard, we were told that he was going to be going back and forth. Uh, as you, uh, if you joined us late, he fractured his uh, tibula uh, three or four games ago and is just getting back this game. So they were going to spot play throughout the day. Ball is at the 43 and a first down for the Sooners. McGee. Up the middle. Almost wiggled his way out of there for a big play, but Clarence Martin Got him as he passed by the neighborhood and brought him down. Clarence Martin, a Texas defender, is a freshman. He's out of Oceanside, California. There are nine Californians on this Texas team. Texas uh, worked the Florida gig for a while and nobody showed any interest. Mm -hmm. So they've turned their recruiting attention to Westerly and they're having a good bit of success finding California youngsters who want to come and live in Austin. Up the middle, it's Michael Rose. Big play. Chris Carter may have saved a touchdown as he brought him down at the Texas 38. Watch the left guard. This is Overton. He's going to pull. Gets a nice block, and there's going to be a huge hole up inside. Center blocks down. The right guard, the right tackle. That's Conrad with a nice block. Good play. McGee running it. Turned upside down by Taji Allen. Eric McGee was the starter last year. He's come on in relief. 
This possession, remember, now started at the two-yard line, and McGee's first play in the game was a pass out of the end zone. Yes, which was very impressive that he threw from his own end zone just coming into the game cold. Second down and two from the 31. They threw the first ball, and they've run the next seven. And they're mounting a threat now. This is Moore, Gerald Moore, and he's, again, very close to the first down. So while they look at that, measure it, possibly, let us check in with John Thunder. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Wisconsin and Ohio State, huge game for the Buckeyes. Bobby Hoying with a little bootleg here gets it down to the one-yard line. From there, you turn it over to the All-American. Eddie George could be a Heisman Trophy winner. Punches that one across. The Buckeyes take the lead, 7-3. Keith. That is going to be a bare knuckler. Yeah, I, you know, we've seen Ohio State the last two weeks, and uh, if they, you know, they are very strong, but if they're primed to, to be upset, Wisconsin has been waiting for them for two weeks. Yeah, but it didn't look like it there with uh, Hoying going down there and button heads yeah. with a cornerback. And Hoying is playing as well as any quarterback in the nation right now. John Makovic. You saw in the measurement they're just short. And so you're looking at third and about a foot. For the Sooners, McGee keeps the ball, follows the offensive line surge, but along with it goes a penalty flag on each side of the field, so the linesman and the line judge both saw it the same way, apparently. It might have been the Sooners starting a tad quickly. Let's see. line really took off. I thought they might have uh, gotten going a little quickly, but not so. The horns are offside. Well, watch over here, Keith. The defensive man on the other side of the offensive tackle Stamps. The defensive man's going to move. Now he's going to start pointing. I didn't see the defense. I didn't see Stamps move. The defensive man tried to pull him, but I think that's a very good call by the umpire right behind those two. And he makes it first down and 10 at the 24-yard line. And the ball is handed off to Gerald Moore. And he's free. He is in the end zone. Touchdown. He ran right between and broke the tackle of Tony Brackens and Bryant Westbrook. And the kick is good by Jeremy Alexander. 98 yards, 10 plays. The Sooners are on the board. Keith, during the Texas OU game, Fletcher's Corny Dogs will sell about 50,000 of these. 50,000 dips, that's a lot of cornmeal and a lot of mustard. I like to have that concession. My dog's got a tail on it. Woof, woof. <laughs> I think he's what? I think he's found his calling. <laughs> <laughs> if I lived down here, I'd Turian would have to break my legs to keep me away from it. They are wonderful. Turian, he's had about six of them already. <laughs> so have you. <laughs> Bob Goodrich has had a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> Goods and I get loose at the Texas State Fair. It's a sight. And more coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Howard Schnellenberger has had a rather intense conversation with his defensive troops now, and we'll see what transpires as Oklahoma gets on the scoreboard under the leadership of Garrick McGee. Go 98 yards and make it a 21-7 ball game. And here's the kickoff with Mike Adams waiting under it at the 8-yard line. And Mike's still trying. And 
gets up across the 30 to the 32 before they finally bring him down. Monday night, Jeff Fahey stars here on ABC in an all-new episode of The Marshal. And this week on ABC's NFL Monday night, got a good one. The Oakland Raiders and the Denver Broncos are in Denver in the Rocky Mountains at 8 Eastern, 7 Central here on ABC. Those two teams always get it on, Keith. I'm looking forward to seeing the Raiders. I haven't seen them. This was a big drive for Oklahoma. The biggest thing was McGee came in at quarterback, 10 plays, 98 yards, and that got Oklahoma back in this ballgame. All right, James Brown in the offensive four has had a considerable rest, and this is Sean Mitchell. Hit right at the point of attack, tries to spin away, and Martin Chase won't let him. And there's no gain. Well, again, that's testimony to what Howard Snellenberger's talking about. He's, he's always done that, Keith. I've known Howard since uh, back in, well, he, he came to the Dolphins. Yeah, he was my offensive coordinator with the Dolphins. And uh, when he went to the Hurricanes, he did that at Miami with uh, Kozar and Testaverde. He puts two quarterbacks in and, and plays them both. Cedric Jones. He just ran around the Texas blocking. This kid is just outstanding. He came into the game with 30 sacks. We mentioned how he's the all-time sack leader at Oklahoma. He doesn't need many more to become the best ever in the Big 8. And it's that two for him already today. Yep. Loss of four, third down and 14 now for the Longhorn. So Oklahoma's trying to put old Mo in a white shirt here. They were down 21 to nothing, just about run out of the stadium. They come back to score, and they're putting pressure on James Brown, who throws a low ball that is not handled by Ricky Williams. If he gets the ball to Williams, let her high, something might have happened. But the shooter defense now is a mile high as it holds Texas. I've got this crowd figured out, Keith. If the far side yells, it's good for Oklahoma. <laughs> and if I'm hearing some good things yelling over here, it must be good for Texas. I've got my, got my bearings now. Split down the middle. Yes, they are. Mark shows his second one of the day. 36 yards on the first one. Gets a little spin on this one. Pretty good kick into the wind. Fair catch is called at the 36-yard line. That's a 37-yard punt with no return. 7-11 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma has been flagged for a personal foul on the punt, which moves the football back to the 21, just beyond the 21-yard line. So they give up 15 yards on the personal foul call with 7-11 to go in the first half, and Texas leading 21-7. Longhorns own that first quarter. Then they got down on the Oklahoma six-yard line, had a holding call, and backed up, backed up, and backed up, and then all of a sudden the Sooners went 98 yards in 10 plays, and they've got the ball, and they're full of vinegar right now. This is Gerald Moore. To the 26 yard line. So that's a gain of about five. Lynch one. Keith, when Gary McGee was leading his team for that touchdown drive, I was watching number one, Eric Moore. Now he's a red shirt freshman. He should have been in his coach's hip pocket learning with every play, but instead he was standing away from the coach, not really gaining from the experience. If he's going to improve, he's really got to learn while he's not in the ball game. Well said. This is Moore, the big guy down the sidelines like a runaway freight. All the way down to the 43-yard line. Great block by Michael Rose to get him around the corner. Chris Carter finally got him out of bounds. Take a look from behind the offense. The offensive line is going to seal everything down, knock him down. 74 is Overton again. He's out there. The fastest of the running backs, Gerald Moore, gets down the sideline, and the o Oklahoma has just turned the momentum around in this ballgame. Hand it off to the up-close man, Michael Rose. He's a 218-pound sophomore. He comes from Abilene. 
Gerald Moore with that speed 226 pounds. I mean he can haul it away folks. He's had 10 carries for 93 yards and we've got 610 to go in the first half and the Sooner offense had most of the first quarter off. Well they did and I think one of the reasons this switched around was because of Snellenberger. He, he didn't lose faith. He got in their ears. He got it and he, and he changed quarterbacks when they went to the second quarter on their own two yard line. Garrett McGee came in and they've got faith and confidence in this fifth year senior and I think that's what's turned them around. McGee gets heat, drops the ball. Texas diving for it and had a shot at it, and they're still chasing it. And finally, the Longhorns get it. Jason Reeves knocked it away from the quarterback, and then about six Longhorns had their hands on it. And finally, Reeves got it. It's a busted play from the start, Keith. Take a look at it. Watch as the back's going to go to the left, and McGee's going to think they're scoring to our right. He either he probably called the play to the left and was thinking that it was going to go to the right because he turned to toss it to our right side and the, and the two, uh, two backs went to the left. They needed a net to catch it. Yeah, I will not quote that. Well, it's, so he was telling us it's a new offense and they'll do better at it next year than they do this year. 49-yard line, Brown is running away from the trouble and finally throws and it is caught incredibly by Matt Davis and it is good for the first down. Matt Davis just came out of nowhere and suddenly there was the ball burning him right between the eight and the six. Next Saturday at 3 Eastern and 2.30, 3.30 Eastern and 2.30 Central on ABC's College Football. This is the lineup. Uh, figure out what game you'd like to see and uh, right now they're having a conversation with number 47 the Oklahoma linebacker Brent DeQuasi who is down winded but when you're sitting home and you know that there's a game out there on ABC Sports that you want to see make check with your local cable operator to see what they might offer you the price is right it's very good here's a look at uh, what's going on today uh, Auburn lost so they'll be slipping down Kansas is winning. On first down, here comes a reverse with Adams. One block, two blocks, needed three and couldn't get him. And he does not get back to the line of scrimmage. He swung it deep and running to the tight side of the field. He just couldn't find enough folks in front of him to get him going. The crazy. They're still working with him because he took a lick. Colin Rosenberg is in the ball game in his relief with four minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first half. We're at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Beautiful, beautiful day. Not a cloud. But way off over there on the horizon, a little sprinkling of white. That's 75 degrees. This is Mitchell. And Mitchell. We'll get him back just about to the original line of scrimmage where Broderick Simpson and Martin Chase. Broderick Simpson is a junior at Oklahoma. His home is in Dallas. To look at the yardage in this second quarter, Oklahoma dominating after Texas scored 21 unanswered points in the first quarter. Four fifteen to go now as Brown rolls it out. He's got some room and he's short of the first down. You see a lot of people slapping at the ball because all of these quarterbacks are running around holding the ball out there like it's a head of lettuce. Well, they're ready to throw it at any moment. <laughs> well, they're losing it. Too. Well, you're right. You're right. You know, when, you, when, you, when you get near somebody, you need to pull it in. But uh, this James Brown is Mr. Excitement when he gets going. Ball is exactly on the 30-yard line. It's fourth down and two. Debo has got his medicine close. Standing in his food, isn't he? Yep. He may lie. He lay down a little while having a nap, too. <laughs> you had to tote all those horns around. You can have a nap, too. <laughs> Time called by Texas. 
They want to ponder the circumstances. Fourth and two when we come back. This touchdown that ties the score, but Oklahoma missed the extra point. Kicked the field goal, eventually won it 16-13. The only game all season the Sooners won uh, by less than two touchdowns. It's fourth and two, Keith. Look for uh, Adams. Look for him to look for Adams on this play. In the huddle, he went over and said something to Michael. Double wide, top of the picture. Took a long time trying no. to get him to jump. Got to hurry. Passes away. Passes good. First down, 15-yard line of Oklahoma. And Fogel kept Adams from getting into the end zone. Well, just as I was saying, it was looking down between the commercial. Here's Adams here. He's just going to run a slam. But in the huddle, before time, he walked over to the other side of the huddle and was saying something to Adams. And when that happens, normally, number one, it's a pass play. And secondly, it's going to whomever the quarterback goes over and talks to. Something usually like, uh, hey, uh, Mike, can you get open on this play? He says, oh, yeah, I can get open on anything. Just throw it to me. I'll buy you dinner. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, I've never heard a receiver say, I can't get open. <laughs> on first down, Brown throws to the sideline. Big old number 85 was looking him in the eye. Rod Manuel and Brown got rid of it quickly. I think he had originally intended to look for some place down the middle, but he didn't find it down the middle. I wonder if didn't have time. I wonder if Lenny down on the field. Uh, Lenny, did you uh, quarterback ask you? Did you ever say you couldn't get open on a route or something? The only thing I would ever tell him, Bob, is I couldn't get open if he didn't throw the ball to me. <laughs> if he threw it to me, I could get open. All right, see, that's what I said. That's why I rest my case. Wide receivers are all the same. Inside the 10. I'll tell you what, James Brown could very easily become a running back, couldn't he? Well, he throws too well for that. That was a designed quarterback draw. John Makovic uh, has a wide open offense. It's, it's, it's a lot of different packages, but with the backs having the speed that they have this year and a quarterback that has that mobility, this offense is really explosive. Swayze comes back into the ball game. 2.15 to go in the first half. Third down and four. The ball is on the nine. Down with time. Down the middle. Complete and knocked away by Anthony Fogel. Pat Fitzgerald, the tight end, had his hands on it, but Fogel spoiled it. Tight end down the middle of the field, releases inside, going to go straight up. Top right of your screen is Fogel, number nine. The ball could be thrown a little bit more inside. Yeah. Good play by Fogel. Phil Dawson for the field goal try. 27 yards. Five out of six this season. Very good kicker. Hammers it through. The cannon boom to the Longhorns lead, 24 to 7. Two minutes and two seconds to play in the first half. 24 to 7, the Longhorns lead. 21 of those points coming in the first quarter, and I mean very early in the ball game. Just shocked them. But ever since then, uh, Oklahoma's been pounding its way back in. Texas responding, had to settle for three on that possession. Those are the first points that have been scored going into the win, too. Now the Sooners with the 2.02 to go. We'll have the wind at their back. The last time they had it, they moved it. But they gave it up on a turnover to spoil their second possession under Garrick McGee. The first time he was in, they possessed it. They went 98 yards and then turned it over the second time. So let's see. Dawson, with the wind at his back, was able to hammer the ball beyond return. But now P.J. Mills has stepped up inside uh, the field of play. And Dawson's going to have to get somebody probably to hold it because the wind's gusting quite a bit now. You'd hate to come up there, wind yourself up, have the ball roll off 
swing and miss it. You'd pull every, <laughs> everything in that right leg, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Be Charlie Brown. Tony Holmes. Pops it up. Fair catch. You can fair catch it, guys. He didn't do it. He took a lick just as the ball arrived. It's Keith Sparks coming up, a running back, to make the catch. So it's a pretty good starting point for the Oklahoma Sooners, and now you got a penalty flag. Keith, Let's next see. year, the, the Southwest Conference and the Big Eight are going to merge. They're going to take some play. Now, all the teams from the uh, Southwest are going in, but of the Big 12 next year, there are eight teams that are in the top 25, and you can see those there highlighted in yellow. This is what the Big 12 will look like. Uh, the Northern uh, Division will have Colorado and Nebraska and Kansas, Kansas State are doing well this year. And in the South, as you see, Texas and Oklahoma will be in the same division along with AM and Baylor and Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. All right, so on the 40-yard line where it's first down for Oklahoma, with exactly two minutes to go, it was a pushing illegal use of hands penalty against Texas. And here setting up a screen pass here if they can to Moore, and Moore takes a hammering. Number 98, Tony Brackens is the man who put him down with authority, but I think it was either Rink or Reed underneath who had him slowed down. So there is a little loss on that play. Way to be second down in about a little ten and a half. McGee's pass, a man over there wide open. Chris Carter had given uh, Juwan Penny a lot of room. A big cushion. Now another penalty flag comes up. Let's see what this one's about. The umpire threw that one well down the field. Oklahoma saying it's against Texas. There's been a lot of penalty flags flying around here in this first half. A lot of emotion wrapped up in this game every time it's played. Personal foul this time it's on Texas. Oklahoma's had two of those previously. We've got the potential halftime report. John Saunders scores highlights on all of that. Plus an interview with Northwestern's head coach Gary Barnett. Talking about his Wildcats. What a great job he's done, huh? But talk yeah, about the I think uh, he did I think he did a pretty good job when they were three and seven myself yes. rather they winning but yeah. it's all whoop to do whoop to do yeah, well. Gary Barnett's been a pretty good football coach as long as I know all right talk about the surprise teams this year you got to throw in Northwestern and Stanford first down on just inside the 26 they're going to run it with number 25 James Allen and that's a first down it's just something in the psyche, something within this, the texture of Oklahoma football that running backs can make big plays. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's like uh, linebackers at Penn State or quarterbacks to Miami. If you're a good running back, uh, you think, wait, well, Oklahoma is one of the schools I'm going to consider. Timeouts remaining, both teams with two, 46 seconds to play in the first half. Oklahoma just spent that one because now they're camped down at the... Uh, 16 yard line and they've got a chance to score again. We've got 46 seconds remaining in the first half and the Sooners did not get the full mark on the last uh, play. They didn't give him the first down. They where he went down is where they gave him the ball and from this angle it appeared he might have penetrated but not so. So it's on the 16 and it is second down and one. And they go for the first down and I don't know if they made it. Maybe. But what they do is kill the clock with the yeah. play. And they got, a, they got a time problem now, Keith. Yeah, 40 uh, seconds. Keith, uh, Howard saying, get up there. And John Makovic uh, is enjoying the, the uh, amount of time that's running off the clock. And what you do here, if you're a coach, is ask for a measurement. That'll stop the clock and buy well, me some time. The referee did. He yeah, had to well, bring the change on. So now the Sooners ought to be in a huddle instead of McGee up there exactly. looking at the ball. Exactly. 
It's the key drive right here. If Oklahoma can score and get seven more points and go down at half by only 10, it'd be a major accomplishment for uh, right. Schnellenberger. You got that right. It is a first down. Call it the 15-yard line. And you've got Allen and Moore in the backfield. This is the backfield that they want all the time if they keep them healthy. And this is Allen. And he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage, and they've got to spend the time out as quickly as they can. They've they got to call it. And uh, Libertardi and getting it called. The clock ran all the way down to the 19. They lost second about mark. five or six seconds. Yep. So you got 19 picks remaining, and they're now trying to come up with something that will deliver a score. Katie has more than me. No, she doesn't. I eat you corn pops. She does too. I do not. Do too. Okay, okay. Do not. There, satisfied? Wait, my mistake. Now, she has more than you. <laughs> the problem with a cereal that's made like popcorn, only sweeter, <clears throat> still a little off, is that it disappears like popcorn, mm. only faster. There, now you're even. She's got more milk. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's pops. These days, trying to get on top of your financial situation is getting tougher and tougher. What you need is someone with experience and know-how. MetLife can help you get a grip on things and help you make sense of it all. Get Met. It pays. at the 17-yard line, 19 seconds to play in the first half. Second down and 12, Oklahoma. Texas leading 24 to 7. And McGee's pass is slapped down. Slapped down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete forward pass, 16 seconds. It's Tony Brackens who got it done. So Brackens coming back with that cracked leg, playing very well here in the first half. He was a two-time all-conference player that uh, was really expected to have a big year this year. And as we mentioned, he's been out for a few games with that uh, slightly cracked leg. Right under the knee, too. Yeah, it's an unusual place. Tibia. 16 seconds. Remember, third down and 12. Out of the shotgun, McGee throws to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete too high. The pass intended for Juwan Penny. Who's the big guy? The tight end is the tall, lanky fellow, isn't he? Yep. Alexander's the biggest one at 6'1". Alexander is their leading receiver coming into the ball game, and uh, Alexander has been outstanding the field goal kicker. Well, Jeremy Alexander is the field goal kicker, and Stephen Alexander is the tight end. Mm -hmm. So this is a 33-yard try for Jeremy, who is 11 of 11 this season. A leg and it's good and you've got six seconds remaining as the Sooners get their tenth point of the first half Oklahoma with one timeout remaining Texas now with two as if it matters a whole lot with only six seconds remaining Talking about the kickoff, you know, he wants to kick it, and he's asking, uh, you know, scrub it along the ground, don't kick it high, uh, exactly, because he doesn't want to run back. He's got the wind behind him. He could probably kick it out of the end zone. That's probably what Howard was asking. He think he could kick it out. He certainly doesn't want him to kick it to the two or three yard line and get a big run back. So his, his choice as to whether to kick it out. Or just just kicking along the ground. Well, Texas might surprise them. They'll put the good hands people up there. Bunch of receivers, and that's what they've done, too. Defensive backs and running backs and that kind of thing. Those kind of folks are going up on the front line. So if he does hit that little knuckleball up there, let's see what happens. Yep. Bunch of backs and receivers yep. and tight ends, aren't they? Yep. 
not a whole lot of blocking. <laughs> Much a small, that's right. But they can run. Uh, they can recover the ball. Well, if you pop that first wave, you know, who knows? Who knows? And it's taken up on the 15-yard line by Wayne McGarrity, a running back. And he's out to the 34-yard line, and the half is over. So after 30 minutes, got a good one, always is. Oh, Texas, Oklahoma. Texas, 24. Oklahoma, 10. Read 24 to 10. Texas started out like a blue norther coming downhill, but they've cooled <laughs> off a little bit. But we talked about at the very beginning about the emotion, these two teams coming in, a bowl atmosphere and all that other stuff. Oklahoma was uh, a little up, uh, a little hyper, a little uh, up in the air. Texas was ready to play, and they got two turnovers and a block punt and then turned it into a touchdown. It's, it's hard to overcome a uh, block punt and win the football game. Well, the whole thing turned early for Texas when Eric Moore fumbled uh, for Oklahoma, the Sooner quarterback, and uh, this particular play sets in motion a whole lot of trouble for Oklahoma. Now, he, he's running the ball here. There's no intent at all to pass because he's a left-hander, and suddenly he's hit. The ball comes out, and that sets up uh, this play, which resulted in Fitzgerald scoring the first touchdown. A little motion. James Brown looks downfield for a second and says there's nobody covering the tight end, and Fitzgerald scores. And coming off this play, everything was the color of Texas as they block a punt. Third consecutive game that Oklahoma's had a punt blocked. Michael Bodwin uh, recovered it. Derek Lewis blocked it, 14-0. But Oklahoma got on the board with this good run by Gerald Moore, 24 yards. Right up the middle, just good straight blocking, and uh, Moore is the leading rusher. And uh, this is what Oklahoma needs to do, score on the ground. They swapped a pair of field goals each uh, to make it a halftime score of 24 to 10. Now, uh, do we assume that Oklahoma retains momentum going into the second half? Well, I think you have to come out and do what you do best. Oklahoma has to come out and run. And uh, I think I think Howard's going to go with whichever quarterback is getting it done. And for uh, Texas, I think uh, the same is for them. They've got to come out and say, we don't have enough points to win this game. we got to come out and throw like our game plan was and, uh, and win it in the second half. All right, we kick off. Ball goes deep into the end zone, and uh, Texas will bring it out to the 20, where it will be first down. Here are the numbers at the half. Uh, take a look at the rushing yards for Oklahoma. They're doing just about what they wanted to. Uh, the turnovers key in this game two for Oklahoma led to 10 points and as I mentioned that does not include the block punt against Oklahoma that Texas turned in to another seven points shadows now starting to creep out onto the field a little bit they'll grow pronounced as we move along through the second half of play and we open with basically the same lineup that started the ball game for the Longhorn Sean Mitchell is the deep back out of this set James Brown sets up and throws quickly to the sidelines to Michael Adams, and the pass is caught for about five yards. This is the worst starting point for a Texas possession in the game. Well, the game stories for Texas early on, we said they needed to air it out, throw the ball. That was uh, a weakness for Oklahoma defensively. They've only got 95 yards, but they haven't needed it. They've gotten good turnovers and good field position and defensively stuff the run and force the quarterbacks to play uh, they've done that pretty well second down call it four and it's a long four for Texas and this time they go to the ground with Ricky Williams there's nothing there they take him down right at the line of scrimmage Sean Mitchell limped off the field with uh, ankle or knee damage or something you asked Darrell Royal a question about this particular ball game, what would determine it over the 20 years that he was at Texas, and he'd always answered, I think, field position and kicking game. Uh huh. And that's what pretty much was the story in that first half. Field position, totally the story for Texas. There's Mitchell. The intended two. It is third and long four. Did the Texas man move, or did the Sooners get caught trying to anticipate? It might have been Dan Neal moving a little bit. Yep. Three, third down. 
So that'll back them up five. It'll be third down and nine. Here's a look at the uh, first half possessions. Notice the first time they got the ball, they were on the Oklahoma 39. They scored their first two times in a field goal on their fifth. Ground the quarterback at 95 yards and a touchdown. Mitchell led the uh, rushers with 76, and Michael Adams had two receptions. Play's got to be a pass. Brown drops. Each coming. Passes away. Passes completed to the tight end Fitzgerald. He's taken down short of a first down, and the Longhorns will have to punt it. Darius Johnson made the tackle. If Johnson doesn't make it, they easily get the first down. Yes, uh, it's uh, tight end. Both uh, teams throw to their tight end a lot. Uh, you're right, if Johnson doesn't come up and make this play, you would think Fitzgerald maybe could have lowered his shoulder and played off that tackle a little bit better than he did. Third punt for Mark Shugis. No pressure. Kick is away. Wind's in his face. Low liner. Spinning into the wind. They'll try to return it. It is P.J. Mills. And not much there for P.J. 39-yard punt and about a five-yard return. Baker comes up with an incredible new pretzel. Doesn't have any customers. Doesn't know how to reach them. Here's the post office has some very smart solutions. Calls for business kit. Baker finds ad mail can target pretzel lovers. Doesn't cost much. Gets his message across. Baker gets orders. Sends them parcel post. Customers are impressed. Baker gets more orders. Pretzels are a hit. Baker makes millions. Now he's the one getting baked. For information, call 1-800-D-U-S-P-S. For years, people have done their thinking on the run. Now, they can do their business on the run. Thanks to the breakthrough that fits in your pocket. Zorus, the personal digital assistant from Sharp that gives you the freedom to write it, type it, sign it, and fax it anytime, anywhere. John, hello, mate. Just got your fax. But you really should get out of the office a bit more. Jilly Palmer is new to Hollywood. I got an idea for a movie. So is Bo Catlin. I've seen better film on teeth. <laughs> you must bring something heavy to the deal. I do. Me. But unfortunately, <laughs> the town isn't big enough. I'd like you to meet my associate, Bear. For both of them. Oh! That's not bad for a guy his size. Man, I can't wait for you to be dead. <laughs> Get Shorty. I love it out here. Rated R. Starts this Friday at theaters everywhere. American Shannon Miller goes for an unprecedented third straight all-around title at the World Gymnastics Championships, Sunday on a special edition of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Here's a wonderful old friend of several million people. 23 years as the Sports Information Director, University of Texas, Jones Ramsey, now living in Ponca City, Oklahoma, retired, enjoying himself, and we're going to get into that mind and some memories with Jones as we go through the third quarter because he hasn't missed an Oklahoma Texas game since 1961. Eric Moore started the game at quarterback. He starts a game at quarterback for the second half for the Oklahoma Sooners. First down from the 39 yard line. And they go this time to James Allen and Allen breaks a tackle on the corner and puts it on the Texas side of the field. First down at the 39 yard line. Chris Carter brought him down. Well, we talked about what Oklahoma needed to do on offensively. They need the big play running, the big day running the ball, and they've done that pretty much. Uh, Gerald Moore with 95 yard leads them. Defensively, they need to get physical. They've not forced any turnovers. They have a couple of sacks, but not a lot of offense for the University of Texas, but the turnovers have made it easy for them. First down, Texas 39. By the middle, bounce outside, nothing there. Texas shut the door that time on Gerald Moore very effectively. They had the ball seven times in the first half. It didn't start off well. They had a fumble and a block punt. They finally got on the board with uh, 10 points late in the first half. Second down and nine. Sooners were trying to go no huddle. 
one of the officials they had a, a golf cart of some of the well that's that's the cart they take the players to the clubhouse on if they're needed and it was rolling down the sideline so the Sooners trying to go with a no huddle and catch Texas off balance is done in with the golf cart. Yeah and the, the side judge over there uh, was afraid that maybe one of the play the players would have been down there a long pass and he did the right thing. Yeah, I think so. Ball around the 38 yard line where it's second down and nine. Shotgun. Eric Moore, the left-hander, looks down the middle. Pass is incomplete. That'll get a flag. It's going to be a pass interference call on Chris Carter of Texas as Jawan Penny had broken into the middle. What do you call it? A square in? And yes. uh, turned it right into the middle. From behind the defense, looking at the quarterback, from the left side of the screen, there's Carter, 16. A little too early. Good call. I think that's a good call from the first time I saw it and a good call the second time I saw it. So the 15-yard penalty puts the ball at the 24-yard line of Texas where it's first down Oklahoma. Carter's a big player in that defensive secondary. He has seven straight games where he has had 10 or more tackles for the Longhorns. They stick it in the end zone here. The Sooners can start the scope and fire. Got a man to throw to. P.J. Mills is wide open, but Moore pulled it down and took off. And he runs out of bounds at about just short of the 10-yard line. And he's skipping back to the huddle. Well, how many times do you hear see a quarterback skipping back to the huddle? This, this looked like a busted play to me. It was. Sure it was. You skip back to the huddle when you're 19. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John knows what's going on. Again, no huddle. Yeah. This is something that uh, first down just outside the 10 yard line. No huddle is a little bit new. And this is Allen. They'll hold him up at about the seven. Here's the first half. Two quarterbacks uh, didn't do much. Uh, four, 11 rushes, 95 yards, and the tight end Alexander led the receivers with two receptions, 26 yards. James Allen at 207 and Gerald Moore at 226 in the backfield right now for the Sooners. Changing his play. Clock. 24 10 Texas Oklahoma knocking on the door. He's giving a signal to change the play you know and I think one of the officials thought he had called timeout. And uh, I think you're exactly right Keith. Let's reset the clock signal. 20 go ahead. Well, Keith, Eric Moore was signaling to the receiver, calling an audible, and he was using a hand signal. Well, the hand signal looked like he was calling timeout, and one of the officials on the sideline then gave him the timeout he asked for. But it was not a timeout. Schellenberg was yelling at him. Eric Moore backed away from center like, okay, well, why are you stopping play? He didn't understand either. He Change the hand signal. Well, that's, that's a good point. Ball is down short of the six-yard line where it is second down. Single coverage out here all day long. They haven't thrown him much to him yet. Uh, Texas figures run, they figure right, and there's a couple of yards lost on the play. Tony Brackens arrived with the ball, and Gerald Moore was not about to be trucking off down toward the goal line with Mr. Brackens holding on to him. Brackens, 6'4, 250, plays bigger. Tony Bracken's number 98 in the burnt orange, I guess that's what they call it. That's right. 98 right there. He keeps everybody loose. He's a, he's a loose guy out there. He does a good job. Third down at the eight. Coming again. Moore looking around. Got some room. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown. P.J. Mills. the end zone before he 
three, pop three, and they found him. There's a reverse angle. This is not the way it was drawn up. This was a pocket pass. Gets a little heat, says, I can run out of here. Let me buy some time. Nice throw on the run and a big play coming out the first uh, possession, second half. Jeremy Alexander puts the punctuation on it. And how do you do? We got a ball game, and that ball is now 24-17, Texas. This is a document in the digital office where you capture ideas and share them effortlessly. Whether they're on paper or on your screen, this is the space where Xerox works, giving you a simpler way to do good work. I can't believe you're back so soon. Tell me about it. Knee surgery is not my idea of fun. You in pain? Not now. My doctor gave me Tylenol, extra strength. Boy, Tylenol works on that kind of pain? Here I am. <laughs> More than aspirin. More than ibuprofen. From post-surgical pain to headaches, doctors recommend Tylenol the most. Good run, huh? Yeah, not bad. It's not over. Oh, man. Come on. You're my agent. You have to do something about this. My face is on the cop with a duck. Well, I'm allergic to ducks. Well, what about Bugs Bunny? He's cool. What? Emmett Smith has Bugs? He's just a running back. Now at McDonald's, get a free Looney Plays to go cup when you supersize any extra value meal. The NFL's Emmett Smith with Bugs, Barry Sanders with Taz, Bledsoe with Wiley, and Marino with Daffy on new to go cups. How'd I get on a McDonald's cup with Marino? Some agent. I'm allergic to dolphins. Have you had your break today? CFA College Football on ABC Sports is brought to you by MGM's new comedy, Get Shorty. Very funny stuff. And the 1996 Subaru Outback, the world's first sports utility wagon. That's not the ride that Swanee got sick on yesterday, was it? No, no, no. He got, I don't know. He was a, on that upside down. Ring, of, ring, ring of, of fire. fire. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eyes were warming around in his head <laughs> about two hours later. John Saunders gone home feeling poorly. Sorry about that. But here's old resourceful and doggedly determined and tough Roger Tribal in our studio in New York. Thank you very much, Keith. I just happened to be in the neighborhood doing the Notre Dame Army game at the Meadowlands, but I'm very glad to be here. Ohio State and Wisconsin, big game going on in Madison. Hoying to Glenn, a two-yard touchdown, and then Carl McCullough, 14 yards on the touchdown run. He gets it to the outside, breaks a couple of tackles. 16, 13 Badgers in the third. Keith. That's a war. All right, Texas back to the attack from the 20. James Brown goes to the sidelines to Ricky Williams. He's got five, and then he gets buried by a bunch of Sooners. We told you Jones Ramsey's visiting with us, and he hadn't missed an Oklahoma-Texas game since 1961. Jones, do you have a particular favorite that you remember in this series? Yeah, Darrell's first national championship, 1963. Yep. You remember Southern Cal was number one, and Oklahoma went out and beat them. Right. They became number one, and then we beat them. We became number one, and Duke Carlisle was a great quarterback. And Dan Jenkins wrote in Sports Illustrated that Duke Carlisle was the best quarterback in America but won't make all conference. <laughs> and that's right, because Don Truel did. <laughs> but we beat him handily, 28-7. Sean, Sean Mitchell just ran for a Texas first down now to get the horns. Longhorns are in a circumstance now where they've got to answer. Good teams answer score. Right. But we stayed number one the rest of the year. Yeah. Darrell's first of three national champions. He didn't come today. You know. I know. He and Tom Landry in Austin. That's, ribbon. That's, ribbon. That's a pretty good bug. <laughs> first down up on the 36-yard line for the Longhorn. James Brown lets it go. Got a man over there. That's Michael Adams. He's out of bounds at midfield, and that's a first down for Texas. And so the Horns come out here going 
into the wind in the third quarter and moving the ball. I think that's an important thing because Texas will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. I remember a few years ago, we've, we've had at times, Jones, some tough weather. I remember coming over here, the water was knee deep one day and the sort of thing. It's been cold, it's been hot, it's been a little bit of everything. But it never has turned down the temperature of the game, has it? No. And most of the time it's hot. Most of the time it's hot. Well, still got it. Oh, he's lucky to get that one back. Lucky to get it back because Anthony Fogel stepped right in front of the intended receiver, the tight end Fitzgerald, and almost came up with the ball. And he had a man wide open downfield, Keith. Look up here to the top of your screen and watch the receiver. Go ahead and run it. He's going to make, make a little move to the outside right here. Now, right there. Take a look. Right there. Stop it. He's going by him, and he hasn't thrown the ball yet. If he would have looked up there, but uh, he had him beat big time. If, if, if. Yep. Kipling us. Pressure coming. Passes away inside. It's the tight end. Can't get loose. They take him down for a loss back at the 45-yard line. And right now, the Oklahoma defense is threatening to take control of this football game because they have slammed the door on this Texas possession right here. They're looking at third. Very long. Oklahoma has a defense that is dominant against the run. They came in the number two defense against the run in the nation. And John McEvack knows that. He knows he has to throw. He can get more yardage passing much easier than knocking heads running. It's third and 13. Brown has it knocked back in his face by number 92, Baron Turner. Tanner. Tanner left in the first half with a strained ankle. They retaped him, and he just made a big play. From behind the offense, a little design rollout. Tanner is going to get out there. Number 92 in the white jersey. He's going to do a nice job. Good effort being blocked all the way. It makes a good effort. Point is away by the Longhorns, and Childress hits a good one this time into the wind. B.J. Mills is going to let that thing go, and it's going to roll around and go dead inside the six. Jones, what do you think about the Big 12? Do you think that's a good thing? Very good. I think it'll be a dominant conference. And, uh, it's going to be make. It's going to be strong, and it's going to help every team in the league. And of course, Texas A&M right now. I think Texas A&M, Nebraska, will dominate for a while. Feeling is, uh, we're talking to Jones Ramsey, who was the sports information director here from 1961 into the 80s, in a walking history book about football in this neck of the woods. Uh, a lot of people think that it'll help the Texas schools keep some of their youngsters at home. Should. In the city. All right, they've got Oklahoma backed up now on the six-yard line. Remember, field position and turnovers ultimately will have a bearing on what happens at the end of 60 minutes. The Sooners go to Jeff Frazier, number 19, and Texas jumps all over him right about the line of scrimmage. So they're playing all of those sore-legged uh, running backs today, Moore, Allen, and Frazier. They did not play at all last week. And they have a stable of good ones, too, Keith. I'm going to ask uh, Jones... What is this about uh, University of Texas and sports information directors? I mean, he's got some outstanding ones. Bill Little right here now does a yeah. great job. Yeah, yeah, right. He trained it. The first one was Bill Sansing. Yeah. Bill Sansing right after yeah. the war. Yeah. And Wilbur Evans. Not too bad. Moore's pass is too high intended for Michael McDaniel, the tight end. It's off his hands and incomplete. And it'll bring up a third down. But I think the uh, the fact when you look at uh, the startling thing about the uh, Big Eight conference right now, John, you got Kansas, Kansas State sitting up here and about to be in the top ten. Well, what? They had four teams in the top fifteen last week. Yeah. Uh, and eight in the top twenty-five. Yeah. So that tells you the quality in the middle of the country is getting a little better. Coaching's getting better too. That's good. Third and ten. Moore can't do it. He tried to turn back inside for daylight, and Jason Reeves would have none of it. And now Texas ought to get the football back in pretty good field position. But you've got Oklahoma punting here with the wind at their back. Now, Lewis has had a hard time. 
punter this year for Oklahoma. We've made the point again and again that he's had three kicks blocked in the last three games. He's a true freshman, too, Keith. He's also yeah. maybe, yep. But there's a reason why he's at Oklahoma as the punter. It means he can do it. And here's why, right there. He just killed it all the way back to the 25-yard line. Mike Adams coming back with it. Fumbles the ball. Oklahoma's got it. First down inside the 25-yard line. Turnovers and field position. 62 yards on the punt. The ball comes loose. He's run two punts back for touchdowns in his career. Henderson gets on it. Travian Smith knocked it loose. Yeah. And officially it goes down as a 63-yard punt. So here's Oklahoma down on the 22-yard line of Texas threatening to tie or possibly take the lead. This is Gerald. It's a nice block, Alexander. And Moore just outruns him. And he can move it for a big time. Yeah. Turnovers have played a big part in this ballgame. Yeah. Kick is good. We've got six minutes and 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. And we are tied at 24. So grease the rocket chair. Day eight over. Better than me, lad. <laughs> yeah. As long as it doesn't turn you upside down. <laughs> Oklahoma has scored 17 unanswered points, and they have tied Texas at 24. The kick goes deep into the end zone and beyond the field of play, and Texas will start at the 20. Jones, one more question. I know you want to get back so you can enjoy the game. I'll quit bothering you. But what, uh, where do you think we ought to put the headquarters of the Big 12? Does it need to be here in Dallas, a uh, media I'm, center? I'm not prejudiced because I don't care. I live in Oklahoma. But Dallas is halfway between all the schools. Now, how about a championship game? At the well, the yeah, Hatchel's traveling all over the country. And I'll let him decide that. But I don't know. But the league headquarters ought to be in Dallas. It's right halfway between all the schools. If you don't have an opinion on a championship game at the end of the season. I do. I want one. I think, sure. it, I think it works. I think uh, I think having a championship game is, is added to the Southeastern Conference uh, schedule with the enlargement of it. And I think it'd be very, very interesting. All right, Jones Ramsey and the penalty flag is on the field, and we'll get back to the ball game. And Jones, thank you very much. It was fun to see you. Bless your heart. I miss you. Thank you. Jones Ramsey, who is a friend of millions in this part of the world. are happening down below as the penalty call goes up against Oklahoma. Darius Johnson is called for the foul, though in college football, you know, they don't specifically identify people. But uh, it is back or left hand on the hip of McLemore. Keith, the last six possessions have been interesting. The momentum is changing. For Texas, the last six possessions, they've had only one field goal and a, a punt block. Oklahoma, on the other hand, their last six possessions, they've scored four times. It is first down after the penalty up on the 26-yard line, and James Brown plants. He's got time to let it go big, and he's got a man wide open. It's Pat Fitzgerald, the tight end, and he's all the way down to the Oklahoma 34-yard line. Man, I mean, he was so loose. Wasn't anybody within 15 yards of it. Well, everybody, he, the quarterback is going to roll out this way, and the receivers are going to come across here. But the tight end is here. Watch as he's just going to sneak down the top of your screen. 
I thought he was going to throw this ball deep down the uh, the bottom of the screen. Look at the tight end at the top. <laughs> well, old Pat did something with it once he got it, too. Yes, he did. First down now at the Oklahoma 34. Sooner defense shot for a moment. Now they're at the bad pass by Brown. Brown trying to dump it off to Ricky Williams, and he did not get it to the receiver. Tomorrow night on ABC, an hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by a brand new episode of Lois and Clark. Then Billy Crystal is not at home on the range. Mm -mm, no, sir. Oscar winner Jack Palance starring, co-starring in uh, City Slickers on the Sunday night movie, City Slickers. I laughed till I was sick watching that. That's all tomorrow here on ABC. You ever been galled? No. Good. You don't ride too many horses. <laughs> You're not used to it. <laughs> this is uh, Ricky Williams getting in a whole lot of trouble. Trying to get around the corner, and the Sooners are having none of it. Nalen Wesley leads the defensive surge. No, oh, it'll be third and ten. Kansas State having some trouble up at uh, Oklahoma State. Yep. Kansas winning at Iowa State, the team that Oklahoma beat last week. Nebraska finally got it going against Missouri. Keith, we've had, we've had 48 points scored in this game, and 45 of the points have been scored going to, with the win, to our right. Only three points going to our left. James Brown's got a lot of room to run. The throw is instead into a crowd. My goodness, he tried to force one in to Michael Adams, and there were two Sooners there, and he's very lucky that isn't going the other way. You can't make it happen. And the timing was a little bit off, and when you roll out, normally it is. So you've got to make sure you see all the defenders. It is fourth and 11, and the offense is still on the field. They may just be burning some clock like they did before and take the five-yard penalty and give the punter a little more room. Yeah, the uh, looks like the punt team is uh, waiting to come, waiting on the sideline to come on. 24-24 ball game at 5:21 to go in the third quarter. He and him barely got by uh, SMU. Well, the ponies are getting better. Yeah. It takes a long time to come back from where they've been. I don't know. Leland McElroy was not. Uh, I didn't think he played. Was questionable as uh, best for playing today. They take the penalty. Here's the punter now, Mark Schultes. He gets it off very high. Last time they did this, they killed it down on the two-yard line, and they get it this time on about the four. Oh, just, it works both times. Yes, good coaching by uh, John Makovic's crew. Kenny Lewis went down and caught the ball on the first down. So it'll be first down, Oklahoma, at their own four, with 5-12 to play in the quarter. What do you think? Are they, the folks are going to meet, I think, October 25, the Big 12 people, to talk about the postseason playoff thing, the championship game. What do you think about that? Keith, I, I compare it to the Southeastern Conference. They've got a lot of teams in that conference, and that game has just gone gangbusters. Yep. Uh, I think it would be a great thing for the Big 12 to have a playoff game. First down. And they call it officially the five because it's just ahead of the four. And this is Gerald Moore, who has been a big gun today for Oklahoma's ground game after they finally settled down in the first quarter. Ryan Westbrook. Moore now has 15 carries, 125 yards, and two touchdowns. He was averaging 89 yards per game coming in. But Moore, Allen, Frazier all missed the game last week, so they obviously were healing him, saving him. Yeah. Second down and two. There he is again. And Gerald Moore has the first down. Out near the 19-yard line, Dusty Renfro, Jason Reeves, defensively. Bob Goodrich, our producer, and uh, Drew Esikoff, our director. And uh, it's, it's uh, 
good as a home because this is home for him. But for Drew Asikoff coming to the State Fair, it's been quite an adventure for him too. So I don't think he's been as ambitious for the Corn Dogs as Bob has. I saw him throw some balls at some dolls yesterday. He didn't hit any of them. His knee was on the ground when he caught the ball. The ball plays dead right there. It's just outside the at the 25. Well, Swanee went over and won a stuffed animal and what a card. Threw $21 worth of balls uh, for something <laughs> it probably could have bought in a dime store for $250. I start throwing some darts at some of those balloons. Yeah, I and they start bouncing <laughs> off of them, and I, I start, and I accused them of having dull darts. Hey, well, wait a minute, guys. Now, I, I, on that one throw, I made it the second time around. I was just trying to build up my prize. <laughs> second down and four. The Sooners, and this is Allen. And James Allen gets past the marker for a first down at the 30. Well, Kansas State, you saw a while ago, won a, is winning again today, and they have one of their highest rankings in a long time, and they're on a roll, but next week they get to go to Lincoln. We'll see how good they are, right? Yes, we'll, we'll know more come mm -hmm. uh, supper time next Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Those are the other games. Call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view, and, of course, game number one in the World Series on ABC Sports next Saturday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. 74, Milton Overton uh, is off the field. He's been very active today, yeah, pulling, uh, especially around the right side, springing some of those uh, runs, big runs. Chris Campbell replaced him from the offensive line. Eric Moore gets a little heat and pulls it down and takes off. He has very little patience. He won't stay back there. If he gets a little bit of pressure, he's gone. He's looking for Steve Alexander, uh, the tight end. When your running game is working, you do the play action, but he's got a lot of people in his face, Keith, and that's why he gets a little jumpy. And uh, Tony Brackens almost took that ball away from yeah, him. Yeah, Brackens has played very well. Yes, he has. He's a pretty good player. <laughs> Maturity will do great things for young uh, Eric Moore. Yes. Third and two. Here comes the run. This is Moore. Oh, I tell you what, he stepped inside that block and just opened up the Jets. Chris Blucker turned him around the corner, and see you later. That's a first down, Oklahoma, at the Texas 35. Well, now you're seeing the running game of the Sooners from behind the defense. Moore now totals 155 yards. Right there, he got his block, and he turned it on. Right here. Number 50, King is going to catch him from behind. He'll get, uh, he'll get some needle in, uh, in the film study from that. On first down at the 35, Moore back, hands the ball off to James Allen. Allen's number 25. And at the line of scrimmage, he stops, and here's one. Keith, I talked to Dan Pickett, the trainer for Oklahoma. He said Milton Overton has a sprained or a, a, a sprained knee, but uh, he came over to the sideline. He's walking around on it, and Dan said Milton just won't sit down so he can look at it. He thinks he's okay. And it's just what he's telling. He says, I'm okay. He's, yeah, and there's the trainer right next to him. He's shaking his head. Well, I guess he's all right. He tells me he's all right. He won't sit down. Well, he, he's the home folks are here. He's from Fort Worth. Yeah. He didn't want to leave his ball again. You have to drag him off. So hurry up, hurry up. Little quick pop in complete. Tyson King got a piece of Eric Moore that time. Number 50. Nailed him to the turf. Tyson King leads the team in tackles. He leads him in forced fumbles. Leads him in sacks. And he has started 18 straight games, and he's trying to get his teammates fired up. P.J. Mills now is going to be the wide man at the bottom of the screen. Third down and 10. Mills has got single cover. He goes the other way and throws behind the receiver, Juwan Penny. And his best bet was P.J. coming down this side. Yes, it was, Keith. No question about it. But... Uh, it all gets back to Schnellenberger's offense. To, you know, he's 
He said 15 days in the spring and 29 days uh, before the regular season start is not enough time to put a whole new offense terminology, offense and defense. And this young Eric quarterback, Eric Moore, will just get better and better. This will be a 53-yard field goal try by Jeremy Alexander. He holds the Oklahoma High School record at 57. He's from Cherokee. And he doesn't get hardly across the line of scrimmage because somebody whacked it. And I couldn't tell who it was, but somebody got up there and got a piece of it. Let's look at the replay and see what happened. It was one of the uh, linebackers or from behind the line that got up in the air. Crenshaw looks like he might be the man. That, Watch uh, the two guys from behind the line of scrimmage. Yep. Yeah. 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 And who was it? That's 16. 16. Yeah. Chris Carter. Carter. Chris Carter just jumping up and got a piece of it. And uh, what happens normally when you go for a try that long, you've got to hit it hard. Yeah. And, and so consequently, it's going to be low when it takes off. Kick it a little lower. Yep. And so they get a piece of it, and it doesn't come off. That's his first uh, miss. Now, he was well, I just 12 out of 12 uh, coming into that try. So uh, that's... Uh, was it 12 out of 12? Yeah. So that's close. Two yard line where Texas takes over the football with a minute and 26 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. We're all tied at 24 24. Here's a look at the last six possessions for the Longhorns five punts and a field goal. Kelly Hayes is working with us. He'll be off. Uh, with the Glamour crew again here very shortly. He works with Al Michaels on Monday Night Football. He's the Malibu Kelly Hayes, except he doesn't live in Malibu. He lives in Colorado. <laughs> uh, here's Swanee. Well, Keith, you know, we're talking about doing the Cotton Bowl and being here and enjoying this experience of college football. And when the third quarter ends, I'm going to have one little moment where I'm going to fire off this cannon for the Texas uh -oh. Longhorns. Oh, don't let him anywhere near it, guys. You don't know how dangerous this guy is. My Just don't stars. aim that sucker up here, Lenny. Uh, it's, I'm going I'm to turn it just a little bit to my right. It's going to have a little shot that flies over the press box. All right. <laughs> you know, you could start something, Swanee. <laughs> it won't be a war. <laughs> That's already going on on the football field. 32-yard line for the Longhorns. Here they come. 24-24 ball game. Give the ball to Ricky Williams. Williams has been in control today. He's done very little. Broderick Simpson on that side as a linebacker might be a very good reason why. He just made another tackle. On him. Keith, Ricky Williams, you know, he's from California. He is the first running back to start at the University of Texas since Earl Campbell. First freshman running back to start. And, he, and he's not on scholarship. Uh, he's a, He signed a baseball contract with the Phillies to play professional baseball. And if you do that, you can't uh, be on scholarship to play amateur sports, and so he's walking on on football. Second down and nine. Oh, oh, there's a flag. James Brown is leveled by number 85, Rod Manuel, and he did it right in front of the referee, and bingo, comes the laundry. <laughs> and of course, James didn't help things a whole lot. He laid down and rolled around and did a lot of crying, but popped right up as soon as the flag hit the ground. So that's 15. Well, the, the advantage is going to go to Texas shortly when the quarter ends and the change ends of the field because almost all of the points, 45 of the 48 points, have been scored when they're going with the win. And John Makovic's crew is going to get that in another 42 seconds. Well, other than that long run of 69 yards by Sean Mitchell, the University of Texas running game hasn't produced much. 18 carries on the 22 yards. So they haven't run much today. That's back into traffic. Mitchell again. Penalty flag hits the field at about the 47-yard line. Cedric Jones on the tackle. And it is a gain of about five yards on the carry, and it thrown in the neighborhood that normally means hold. Here you go. John's calling.
calling the plays again, uh, Keith. He kind of went away from that for the last couple of years and let Gene Dahlquist and uh, some of the other guys call it. But, uh, you know, that's what he does so well. He gets a feel for a game, and he can spread the ball around and get it to the wide receivers and the tight ends and the backs and get it downfield and get it get over. He does it so well that he's gone back to doing it, and uh, I think uh, the results uh, have been uh, very positive. Penalty comes back to the 42. First and 20. Mitchell can't get away. Number 47, DeQuasi, makes the tackle. And here's 20. Look out, everybody. Hold on. Oh, and that, my friend, is the end of the third quarter. <laughs> in the words from our ABC station. <laughs> Here's Big Tex. Welcome back to the 90th meeting between the Oklahoma Sooners and the Texas Longhorns. Now back to Keith, Bob, and Lynn. I do thank you, Tex. <laughs> I'm proud to be here <laughs> with Bebo. Bebo's perked up a little bit here. He's had his nap. You couldn't tell it from that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Although he was standing. 15 minutes to go in this 90th classic between the Sooners and the Longhorns. It is second down and 20. James Brown looks and goes over the head of Michael Adams. He had used Quentin Wallace to draw a defender away and sent him deep, and he couldn't get away. In the meantime, Cedric Jones was coming. For the numbers, Keith, after three quarters, look at the rushing yardage for Oklahoma on the left side, 252 yards. Passing for Texas, only 164. Turnovers, uh, the, the time of possession goes with Oklahoma, and that's because they run the ball a lot more. Well, it's exactly. usually the case. Uh, uh, Alan Moore had meant to the offense. They had 26 carries between them for 202 yards. Brown's got all day, and now he throws to the sidelines. The ball is caught, and they're going to call him down at the 41-yard line because when he caught the ball, Matt Davis had a knee on the ground. But it is a substantial gain. It leaves him only a couple of yards, three yards short of the first down. Here's a look at the third quarter only. Look at Oklahoma dominated with a total of 134 yards to only 83. And the one turnover there, Texas uh, had three punts in the third quarter for Texas. This will be the sixth of the day. P.J. Mills standing back at a five for Oklahoma. This is a good chance to, a uh, good position on the field to do a fake if you had one. That's an angle toward the corner, tail dragger. Oh, he got by him. He got away from Wallace and went into the end zone. He was down there where the ball hit the ground, and he didn't catch it. It's amazing, amazing how many times uh, people will go down there and watch a ball bounce. They don't have to let the ball bounce. They go down there and catch it and put it down. Well, he did that earlier in the game, Wallace, but that time he got turned around a little bit. So instead of being down around the four, it comes out to the 20. Howard looks like he wants a timeout. Yeah. Hilton Overton is back in the offensive line for Oklahoma now as they start this possession of a 24-24 ball game. Final quarter of play. Eric Moore still got it. And run out of bounds at the 35-yard line with a first down. And again, it's Chris Carter, the free safety patrolling the sideline. You run the ball and you run it well enough. It doesn't matter whether you're going into the win or not because uh, it doesn't slow these guys down any. This is an interesting look here. All those points were scored with the win. This is Moore. He shook one man and made something out of nothing. 
It looked for a minute like uh, Bryant Westbrook could get him, but he just ran right through him. And went on and picked up about six yards. And Moore is kind of slow to come around. He's out of there, and Michael Rose comes in. Michael Rose has thrown a couple of blocks in this ball game that were memorable. And he's in there right now. James Allen. First down for Oklahoma as he slams his way to the 48. That's just good, tough running there. week against Rice the Texas defense gave up 275 yards on the ground they've already given up to uh, over 250 in Oklahoma here today Eric Moore with no pressure has it knocked up in the air and it may be caught by Michael Rose it looked like he went up and got it between two Longhorns and he did well, number 20 makes the play now let's check in again with Roger Clement. Key third and goal for the Buckeyes and Eddie George from one yard out his second one yard touchdown run of the day and the Buckeyes back on top 2016 with 832 left to go in Madison. Keith. Man what a big game that is. Uh -huh. in the big, <laughs> big game nationally for Ohio State. Well there's some pretty good defense. That's a loss of at least a yard for James Allen. Ohio State can get out of Madison, Wisconsin with a win today. Boy, that's some stretch they yes. had. Mm -hmm. they, they won at home against Notre Dame, then they went to Penn State and won there on the last drive, and then go to Wisconsin. Washington to beat Washington and yep. Washington, their first and Boston, Scott Boston College at the uh, kickoff classic. Third down and six. Over the middle, the ball is knocked down by Chris Carter. The free safety got a hand on it and slapped it away. The young man is everywhere today. Chris Carter blocked the field goal. He's second in tackles on the year. He has seven career interceptions. Number 16, just to the left of the... This is very close to being completed. Right there. He saw, he read the quarterback's eyes. He knew where he was going. He was free and saved a completion. Mike Adams is deep. Ryan Lewis. Chris Carter's back there with Adams. Might have a little room with this one. It's Adams. It's one block around the corner. Oklahoma 47. Brian Lewis, the punter, brought him down. 11 05 to play in the game. Let's put it on the 47 where it's first down for the Texas Longhorns. Oklahoma. Texas had that wild outburst in the first quarter for a 21 0 lead, but Oklahoma's been dominant since then. Now Texas trying to regain some momentum. James Brown looks, lets it go for Wallace. He's over there, but he can't. Oh, he got it. He got onto the ball. Quentin Wallace makes a great catch. I didn't think he could reach it. He did it right in front of Malin Wesley, and he's hurt. He's limping off the field. Trying to and finally gives up and you'll have a timeout for Wallace. Good protection for Brown. Look at this catch. Oh, I can't really see it. Can't tell from that angle. Out of the but, sun uh, into the shadow. Yeah, that's tough. Boy. Good job getting his hands down underneath the ball. And the official was right there looking right at it. Had the open view of it. Yeah. Good call it. Here's 20. Hey. 
Bob and Keith, when you were a receiver and you make that kind of catch, one of the first things they teach you, when you're down and your hands are under that ball, roll over on your back as fast as you can, even if you've trapped it. If you roll over quick and it looks like you have control, nine out of ten times, your official might give it to you. Uh, listen to the that. tricks of the trade. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Mitchell. And nothing doing. And a loss of the yard on the play. I thought Swanee was an honest guy. He's got a nice looking face, you know. He looks like an honest guy. You never know. Well, you want me to start telling some stories about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a few on you too there, boss. <laughs> There's a trick to every trade. Second down and 12. Let's call it a two-yard loss for Mitchell. Passes away quickly to Michael Adams, and Michael goes out of bounds right about the marker. I, think they, I don't think they're going to give him all of it. Leave him a little bit short. Larry Bush, cornerback on that side. Adams with five catches today, 55 yards. Bush is not real tall. He's only 5'9", but he does have three interceptions on the year. 10.05 to play in the game, a 24-24 tie, and it's been some time since Texas has been down this close. Come out of threat. Gives it to Williams. And I don't think Williams made it. Williams has that really quick first step to get him into the stack. It'll be fourth down. It's a leading tackler, linebacker, Simpson, number 51. He had him to the shoulder and just would not let him penetrate. So it's fourth and inches. Williams outside, better hurry. Ball loose, Oklahoma's got it. So the whole thing blows up. It could have Ricky blown up. Williams had no chance. Terrell Peters just ate him up. It could have blown up even worse. Yep. I mean, this is a tie game. I mean, Williams has just stopped for no gain. You have to turn the ball over, but if this ball, he throws this ball up, he knows it's fourth down. He's a true freshman, the first one to start. Look at that. He knows it's over with. He's just trying to throw it backwards. If if Oklahoma catches that ball in the air and runs it the other way. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. So Ricky Williams uh, could have become very famous with that play. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I don't know why uh, they chose not to go for a field goal. Garrick McGee is back in the ball game for Oklahoma. And they pick up about three yards on that play. And here's Roger with more news out right of the studio. Well, Keith, a lot happening in Madison, but right now it is all Ohio State. Second and seven, 49-yard line. And look at Eddie George. 51 yards for the touchdown. His third rushing TD of the day, his 10th of the year. 27-16 with six and a half to go. That wow. kid's amazing, isn't he? Yep. He's like some of the, oh, many of those great running backs. This is Gerald Moore. As a matter of fact, Gerald Moore is like so many great running backs. As the, as the day goes on, he gets stronger. And there's a penalty flag in the wake of that play. I think it's coming back. Holding against Oklahoma. You see, if Texas goes for three, kicks the field goal, uh, three points could get pretty big in about five more minutes. Especially, you know, like we've been saying, all the points have been scored down to our right. Uh, force Schnellenberger Sooners to go down and score the other way. But it's interesting to look at Howard, how how ruffled he looks, and to look at the other sideline to John <laughs> Makovic. Oh, Johnny. Well, <laughs> this is about as animated as John's gotten all day. I mean, he's just usually under composure. Well, the last time we saw John, he was at Colorado Texas game last year, and he can't, he's got a concussion on the right. sidelines. He got run over and laid up three weeks. Then he got run into last week and banged up a knee, broke some cartilage, and he's got a bad hip. So all that on the sidelines. Yeah. He ought to be up in the press box. Yeah, he's an accident looking to happen. Time called. Uh, ball is at the 10-yard line, and it's 
charged against Oklahoma. CFA College Football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Tagamet HB, the most prescribed medication of its kind, is now available for heartburn. The document company Xerox, a simpler way to do good work. And Burger King, where you get your burgers working. Miniature sized Boomer Schooner today. They don't, can't come on the field, they're just grass. And they can't come pounding out here. So they've been sitting over there enjoying the day. From the 10, it's McGee throwing the ball to the tight end, Stephen Alexander. And he gets it up to about the 16. Time permitting, thrifty car rental post game report, scores and highlights about the country. Mm -hmm. 24-24 score here. I like this kid, Stephen Alexander, Keith. If he were in a uh, Bobby Bowden or a Steve Spurrier offense, he'd be catching tons of balls. I like also that uh, Howard putting, there's uh, Alexander, McGee in the ball game. He's, uh, he played well when he was in there earlier. He's the senior. See, he just hangs in there. The young quarterback doesn't have that much patience. He'd be out there loping along by that time, but McGee stayed all day and just missed. So he'll have to punt now on fourth down. Well, Texas has got to get pretty good field position out of this. They have to. This is not a place to be going in trying to block a punt either. You get two guys back, Keith. Whenever I see two guys back receiving a punt, I think of reverse. Yep. Probably selling that. Pressure on him anyway. Point is here, catch it. Don't let it get too much of a roll on you. They got see they're gonna give up a good 10-12 yards there. If they'd come on up under that ball and caught it. But even so, it's still very good field position at the 40. After a 44-yard punt, but that included a 12-yard roll. Time remaining is seven minutes and 48 seconds, 24-24 time. Howard trying to get his troops fired up. Texas plays Virginia at home next week. This this game and the Virginia game next week are out of conference. It's kind of what John was saying is for national exposure and attention. And then he goes back into the conference play. Against a pretty good team. Yes. Texas Tech. On first down, James Brown tries to plant the cut. Falls down and there's a penalty flag. Looks like it's going against the horn. James a uh, little upset with uh, Peters uh, laying on him for so long. He's a lot of holding today, haven't you? Oklahoma's schedule gets, uh, they got a bump in the road next week against Kansas, which has been one of the surprise teams in the country, I think. But I remember, I remember back in August, Lynn Mason said somewhere that we might be better than some folks think. Uh -huh. And then he said it last week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know what? And then he other people. Be right. And then other people are saying it. Kansas State and Kansas looks like it might be a uh, pretty key ball game yeah. in the Big Eight. All right, they back him up to the 30 where it is first and 20. And round back. Oh, he's got his tight end down the middle of the field. He goes to the sideline pattern, and it is good. So he took his choice. He went to the side for Justin McLemore, who is one of those sure-handed receivers, a possession kind of guy, and Justin made the catch. He's from Waxahachie. He missed all of last year with a knee injury, McLemore did, and... Uh... Both of the starting wide receivers, uh, Michael Adams on the other side, uh, missed most of the year. One of the best baseball minds I ever met was from Waxahachie, Texas, a fellow named Paul Richards. 47-yard line. Second down and three. Uh-oh. Brooks. 
as a coach, that just drives you nuts. I mean, you just had a holding penalty. Now you had a nice pass play to overcome part of it. Corby couldn't hold the rein. He's a senior from Austin, too. That's 12 penalties and 94 yards on the long ones today. That is a ton of penalties. Right. Who was it? USC had 16 penalties last week in the ball game against California. Berkeley. 16 penalties. You're pretty good. You can win. Second down and eight. That's Michael Adams in motion. He's looking for him. Too high. The NFL game on ABC's NFL Monday night this week since Jeff Hostetler and the Oakland Raiders a mile high against Big John and the Denver Broncos. These old boys have been button heads for a long time and they're not terribly fond of each other. It'll be a good a dandy as they say. That's at 9 Eastern 8 Central here on ABC Sports. Jeff Hostetler he's not pretty but he just gets it done doesn't he? Yep. It is third and long, and Brown looking around, buying time, throw bounce passes to Ricky Williams. Well, he was searching the entire field, and by the time he saw Williams, he had just run out of energy, couldn't deliver it to him. He's 19 out of 31 now for 235 yards. They got a punt. Time's going to start to get pretty precious here pretty quick. Still a lot of time, though. Seven minutes to play, and... Um, Field goal on the last one, though, was, uh, would have been nice to be up three points. Kicks out of there. The wind's going to help it. And it's going to go over the receiver's head and take a bounce and go sideways and into the end zone. Almost. But he outkicked the coverage, and uh, they just couldn't catch up for the ball. The 58-yard punt. <laughs> that have occurred in this contest that is right now tied at 24-24. Six minutes and 52 seconds remaining to play. Oklahoma's ball, first down at their own 20. <clears throat> Texas was down knocking on the door about five minutes ago and was stopped. Did not go for the field goal. Gerald Moore is the deep man. He's got 161 yards on 18 carries. Garrick McGee is the quarterback. Well, yes. Got a screen working for the tight end. Alexander out to the 32 first down Chris Carter saved the big gain again three safety was over to make the play defensively there's a quarterback he's going to roll this way to pull the defense with him and here's the tight end now watch his alignment are going to come out here on the screen this is a well-conceived play rolls left tight end blocks tight end blocks now he gets him the ball if the lineman would go down two on two if they get those two blocks it could have been a huge play here goes Moore Darrell Moore to the 41 yard line where Westbrook makes the tackle for Texas both teams have outstanding field goal kickers Dawson for Texas and uh, Alexander for Oklahoma for those of you who have passed through previous Oklahoma Texas weekends in Dallas not much on Commerce Street last night it was closed about 20,000 came out uh, to the west side and had a party with very little trouble it was very much part of the normal OU Texas weekend that is the first down for the Sooners put the ball up at the 47 yard line and as you saw Ohio State has won. 27-16, the final score, and that's quite a remarkable run for the Buckeyes. Yeah, Congratulations to Cooper. Yeah, exactly. They're not fighting over there. They're just stretching him out. That's the kicker. Jeremy now that's, Alexander. That's a big win, Keith, and that's one of those things that uh, if you didn't know the circumstances of Wisconsin and how well they were playing and at home, you might not give that as much weight as you should if you were voting in a poll. You know what I'm saying? There you go. This is Gerald Moore carrying one more time and loses a yard as he is taken down at about the 45-yard line. 
Clock is running right along, mind you. At 5.25 to play now in the ball game, and at 24 time. It'll be second and 12. behind the 40 taken down by Chris Akins at the 39 yard line Akins is a two-time powerlifting champion playing nose tackle wrestlers and powerlifters are, are, are good nose tackle they're usually not real big and they're squatty and they can move and they are strong Gary Darnell that time with a little blitz the defensive coordinator. 420 to play. Third down and 17. McGee now getting some heat. And did he get there? No. Or well, they'll have to punt it. Or they'll have to gamble. One of the tough. With three minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the 90th game between Oklahoma and Texas. The Sooners on fourth down and nine will punt in a 24-24 tie. Mike Adams and Chris Carter are deep for Texas. Ryan Lewis to punt for the Sooners in the win. Good kick. High hanger and a fair catch. At the 18-yard line for the Texas Longhorn. So they are 82 yards away from the goal line. If they seek the cross. They have three minutes and 27 seconds of time remaining on the clock. And if you're uh, wearing the burnt orange of um, Texas, uh, not many things have happened good for you since the first quarter when you went up 21 to nothing and they were up uh, 24 to seven. But since then, Oklahoma has just come roaring back to tie it at 24. And as we mentioned, at all the points, 45 of the 48 points have been scored going in the direction that Texas is going now. There's a little breeze. Officially call it the 19-yard line, and James Brown will throw on first down. It's incomplete. It's thrown away. It was intended for the Fitzgerald, the tight end, and he was not available. Well, that was the play that worked well earlier, Keith. The tight end sneaking down the uh, sideline. Quarterback rolling away from him. He just went back and threw it, and that time it was covered and was not open. The score at halftime was 24 to 10. Texas, when leading at half, coming into this game, had won 29 in a row. 18 of those under John McEvick, who we just saw there. Against Oklahoma, Texas is 32 wins, no losses, and two ties in games they have led at halftime. That's a little bit of history. It is second down and 10. And things are not going well for the Longhorns as Cedric <laughs> Jones comes storming in and decks the quarterback. Cedric Jones has been a dominant player in this ballgame. Just a little swing, a defensive end. He was coming up the middle and just sacked the quarterback. It's an Oklahoma timeout. Seven to play in a ball game. Texas is looking at a third and 13, and they are 0 for their last 10 attempts at a third down conversion. And they will work out of the shotgun for James Brown. He's got good protection. He's got his pass away, and it is incomplete. It will be fourth down and 13. Oklahoma crossed up then, uh, went with a three-man line, dropped eight defenders. Kurt Van Valkenburg, the defensive coordinator, doing a nice job. Well, I can 
I'll tell you right now, a lot of folks in the burnt orange are grumbling about that field goal we should have gone for. Yeah, I, I agree that they should have gone for it, Keith. I don't know what uh, John was thinking. Uh, but I'd rather a tie game get two points on the board. Schultz's punt. Been helping with the stand. The uh, ball is fielded by P.J. Mills back at the 40. And comes back. Seven yards, eight yards. Excellent field position. With 2.47 to play, and Southern California has defeated Washington State 26 to 14. All the Trojans continue undefeated. And they are headed for South Bend next week, isn't it? This is the second best field position that the Sooners have had to begin a drive all day. Though they are facing the wind, I think it's quieter now than it has been. They have a very good field goal kick. On the 49-yard line. Tough running. Even the quarterback is a tough runner, Garrick McGee. Chris Carter, another tackle. That's 10 in the ball game for him. This is what we have for well, you. He was kicking Saturday. it from 50 yards uh, into the wind during the warm-ups. So, the field goal kicker, so that's the case. You have to get down to about the what? The 33-yard uh, line. James mm -hmm. Allen to the 35-yard line. Maybe the 34. Howard over there on the sidelines directing traffic. Texas had two remaining timeouts. Oklahoma has one remaining timeout. Oklahoma cannot stop it as, as, as easily as a normal team because they don't throw the ball that much. Incomplete passes stop the clock, but Oklahoma is a running team, and unless they pick up a first down, they can't stop the clock other than using that, that only that one timeout. And you want to save that for the field goal. Whoa, big defensive play from the Longhorns. It's Stoney Clark. And Stoney Clark is the big fella who made the play that saved the game last year at the goal line when he stopped James Allen. Stoney's the poet. Don't know it. The rapper. Writing an autobiography says, who, who says it? you have to be an old guy to write an autobiography? <laughs> Why do it when you're old? Yeah. <laughs> McGee down the middle. The ball is caught. Caught with the tight end, Alexander. That's the man they have to get it to, Alexander. It is to the 30. They've got to go to near the 24 for their first down. And they are in, they are probably in his field goal range right now. It's 30 yard line, that'd be a 47 yard field goal. Add 10 for the win, though. Well, he was kicking him this far in the pregame warmups. All right, timeout called by Texas. Stop the clock, 121 to play. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Gerald Moore for Oklahoma. 21 carries, 174 yards, two touchdowns. Chris Carter for the Texas Longhorns. Ten tackles, a blocked field goal. Played well all day. He's been all over the field. Celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. Here's Jeremy Alexander. Staying loose. Keith, why would Texas take a timeout there? I mean, that's just helping Oklahoma. I mean, they're, they're conceding the fact that they're going to kick a field goal and just saving the time for themselves after the field goal? I would guess. I don't think, I don't think this, uh, I wouldn't concede a 47-yard field goal into the win. That just seemed to me to help, help the offense and settle Oklahoma. Maybe they wanted to catch your breath, too. It's yeah, third and six. That's true. That's a pretty good-sized play right here. I'd say you're going to roll out or a quarterback draw.
He didn't make it. The pass was caught by Gerald Moore, Tyson King defending. He did make the catch, but it is not a first down. Schnellenberger's out on the field, wants to know where it is. Could probably ask for a measure, but then buy some time. Clock is running inside of a minute. It's fourth down and, uh, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a yard. Clock is going down. You got a timeout. Why not try the field goal right now? I would. If, you, if you don't make it, I would. you'll never get an opportunity to I kick would. it. He's probably, right he's probably just going to run the clock, run, run the, the clock, clock down, down, and then call the timeout. Call the timeout and kick it. I Take think that's what shot. he said. Take your shot at it. Yep. Right here. That's what he's going to do. So the ball is on the 25, back it up 732. You're talking 42 yards into the wind. His longest this year is 43. Did you see that there, Howard uh, Schnellenberger, just kind of smiling at the young man, probably saying something very positive. Says, I know you can do it, son. Just go out there and kick it. Make me happy. <laughs> Make this old gray-haired man happy. Make the Sooner Nation happy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Howard went on that first tour this year. And he was doing a little selling, going around the state, and he kept talking about the Sooner Nation. Uh -huh. Had a good response, too. Well, he kept talking to the fans. He said, the fans that used to get to the games late, he says, I need you there early. When we come out to warm up, he says, I want a lot of fans there in the stands. And he said it seemed to work because uh, they're there 50 minutes before the ball game now when the players come out. And All right. The principals in this are Tyler Wickersham, who, Taylor Wickersham, who has to snap it, Tim Daughter, who has to hold it, and Jeremy Alexander, who has to kick it 42 yards into the wind. And this is probably worth a win. 31 seconds to play in the game. The snap was high. The kick is hooked left and missed it. So the horns dodge a bullet. In a game that could well have been leading by three. Six ticks on the clock remaining. Oklahoma made a great comeback because Texas opened up with a 21 point outburst in the first quarter and led 21 0. Sooner, Natalie, we're back to time. And that's where we are right now. This is Brown throwing on the move to Michael Adams. And Adams very quickly out of bounds at the 32 yard line. They took over at the 25. That's a game of seven. Texas has got a couple of timeouts to uh, work with. Just one. One timeout to work with. And uh, they've only got 23 seconds. That's, the, of course, the critical thing. Yeah. And the thing you got to be careful of that you don't turn it over in your haste. Uh, exactly. And uh, it's almost like sudden death here. Good. He's trying to stay with the sideline stuff yeah. so they can get out of bounds and Wendell Davis slapped that out of the way. If you catch the scoreboard has expired on us. My goodness, <laughs> it's gone. We don't know what the time remaining is, but it can't be a whole lot. It was, uh, I think the last time I looked, it was like 23 seconds or something. It's got maybe a little bit less than that. So all of the power just went kaput. To the scoreboards, anyway. Huh. Bill Dawson's got a pretty good leg, and with that wind at his back, I mean, you give him a shot from 15, he's liable to yeah, knock well you they, down. Well, they come. There comes a point in time here, Keith, where the offense of Texas just throws it down there, almost like a hail mary, uh, just to. Uh, it's either going to be complete for your guy, which is would be great, or even if it were intercepted and you. And, and you lose the ball, it's still not enough time for uh, Oklahoma to do anything with it. Well, I would say Texas has got at the most three plays left, wouldn't you? Not knowing exactly what the time is, but it can't be more than 20, 21 can't seconds. Can't be more than 20 seconds, I would think. 
But on both ends of the stadium, power just went pop, gone. Oh, the lights are still burning. John Makovic, they're talking. Washington and Stanford for 14 14. Huh? That's, well, that's, you know, Stanford's undefeated in the conference. Stanford's been one of the big surprises of the year, I think. Yes, they have. Stanford, I Northwestern, Kansas, and Kansas State. Big surprises. How about uh, the other way? Negatively, how about the University of Miami? Louisiana State has been a big surprise. A pleasant, pleasant surprise. All right, James Brown now has had his talk with his coach. And I'm sure they've checked with the uh, back judge who would have the time. And they've told both coaches how much time is left. They would use the play clock, right? So that's 19 seconds. Yeah. Okay, okay. we can tell from that. They've set the... The 25 second clock has been set so that we know uh, how much time remains and it's 19 seconds. And the coaches now on both sides are being advised of that. Well, not a bad little ball game. In the Red River shootout. Not bad. I enjoyed this. I, I'm willing to come back. Uh, you know, <laughs> Gee, thanks. Next year, corn dog. I have a couple of corn dogs. A little cotton candy you, that you gave me early on. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great weekend. College football. All around fun. Everybody behaves themselves. Mostly this year. And it's not always been the case. It got a little rowdy around here in 1992. So we will put the time remaining in the left hand corner there of your television set, and you can watch it. That's got six, uh, I figure three plays. And all the ribs. Texas was down, could have kicked the field goal, chose to try for it, didn't work. Oklahoma came back, missed a 42 yarder into the wind to win. And now Texas with 19 seconds remaining. 34 youngsters from Texas on the Oklahoma roster. A roster of 87 players. Here comes one of those precious plays. It's a run. And it's good for a first down. So that kills your clock right there with 13 seconds remaining. And they got to move the chains, and they're up at the line of scrimmage, ready to go after the first down. It's one of the things in college football you don't have at the other level, professional level, but keeps running. Now Brown spikes it to ground, and that's good. They lost four seconds. By the time the uh, first down stopped, you moved it up. Uh, he marked it ready with 13 seconds, and he, when he grounded the ball, it's down to nine. So he's got two plays probably at most. Washington has taken the lead over the Stanford Cardinal at 21-14 out at the farm. Dawson, the field goal kicker, can kick him 50 yards. He just needs to get it down inside the 35-yard line. Oh, that ball's thrown way too high. Michael Adams was over there and, and uh, had some coverage, and it was a bit of a risk going that way to him. Tight end was down the middle, and uh, he was well covered, so he was not available. Now only four seconds yeah, remaining. Both sides, both sides, no, do the alley oop. The uh, Oklahoma side was saying get back, and John was saying, all right, yeah, throw it up, do that. The tie helps anybody. But it may not hurt. Certainly doesn't hurt as much as a loss. And in the standings, we're it's too early to tell. The ball's on its way. And it is no good. I tell you what, though, Matt Davis went there and then got his hands on it. And the game is over. The 90th meeting of Texas, Oklahoma ends in a 24 24 tie. Don't forget the World Gymnastics Championships tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific, here on ABC Sports. We hope you enjoy it.